Three, two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Oh, I was almost on time. I was this close. Well, you caught me. Um, I was setting up here. I'm actually still in the process of setting up. So I'm while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing tonight here for HeroQuest. So welcome everyone in the chat here. It's a ma and Caxips06, Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and We Love Marbles. So thank you for joining us once again. And if you're watching us on YouTube, of course, it's not live. It would be the replay. If you're watching us on Twitch, we are live. So if there's any problems with the stream, please let me know. So what we're going to be doing here is, well, first we're going to test the cameras. Okay, looks good so far. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to do another run of my homebrew solo solo hero quest system here. Now, once again, I'm using these tiles that I created, and you may remember these familiar symbols from the map, classic hero quest. Now I've added in, you know, potions, uh, scrolls, equipment, and traps, fire burst traps, and furniture. So the idea is it's going to be sort of like, um, as I've said before, it's sort of like Space Crusade, where you enter a quadrant to the board. I put out a number of these tiles. Once the And the tiles move up to five squares at a time on the Zargon turn. And then once they come into line of sight of any of the hero players, or the hero characters, I should say, then uh, I put them out. And it could be just about anything. Now, of course, you can increase the difficulty by increasing the number of tiles you put out and so on. So what we're going to do today, though, we're going to do something a little special because I did make this mod some time ago and I'm just going to freely mix everything together. But it's uh, called Demagicified, <laughs> the Demagicified world. So instead of the wizard, we've got a new character here. So here's the familiar wizard from the remake anyway. And he is replaced with the alchemist. So as you can see, the alchemist is pretty much the same sort of thing, except his powers come from natural philosophy. <laughs> and he has skills, uh, which are equivalent to the magic spells that the wizard would have used. So you've got that character. And now the elf is uh, an apothecary, but, you know, still an elf. Elven apothecary. The Barbarian and the Dwarf are the same. So we'll just get those characters out. Once again, if you're following along at home, these are uh, these are the cards from the remake. I mean, they're nice and everything. They got a nice linen finish to them. But they're not nice and big like these, uh, these character boards. So I, I kind of prefer these. Also, there's some uh, some new surprises when it comes to the monsters, and you'll you'll be finding those out. I'll just keep it a, as a surprise. So the first thing we do is we shuffle the monster cards here. So the idea is we try to keep it random, but I'm playing against myself, and rather than me seeing the quest book and knowing everything that's going to happen and just pretending that I don't know. To surprise all of you, it's actually going to be a challenge for me. So I might win, I might not. So to determine what the Wandering Monster on this quest is going to be, we'll just draw a card. And so we won't reveal it until the time comes. I'll just set it aside here. And I'm not going to cheat myself by looking at it ahead of time. And now I have printed some custom cards for the remake set. Not as many as I have for the classic set, but here's the treasure deck. So the treasure deck does have a few extras in here. Let me count them out. Okay, so there's actually 34 treasure cards now. So that's nine more than would have been found in the original set. And it's pretty much, uh, I took stuff that would have been in, like in the re uh, European treasure deck and just put it in here. So I've shuffled those now. So there's our treasure deck. 
And the idea in this mod is that when you search, you can only search for treasure in a room where you've found uh, furniture. I know that's different than the standard rules, but that's how we're playing it. So if it's an empty room, you can't search. And there can't be monsters present. Now, I've got the equipment deck here. Now, I've taken all the potions out of here because I have a separate potions deck that we're going to use. This is a custom potions deck. And so basically all of the potions that are available in all of the expansions are shuffled in. And so potentially if you if you get a potions card, then you draw one of these. That's how it works. And we are going to use the hero combat cards. So the barbarian and the dwarf do get uh, two combat cards each. That they can use according to the rules on here so i've shuffled well let me shuffle it a little bit more here all right so this is the barbarian and this is the dwarf and we'll put those away okay barbarian let's see what he gets so we've got Heroic Sacrifice and Parry and Repost. So that's for the Barbarian. And I'm actually using the same character sheets as last time. I'm just updating. So Exodius Majesticus is the, uh, the Alchemist. And we had quite a bit of gold from last time, um, even though I had it like on easy mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and carry it over just to make it that much easier for myself. So... Uh, I bought him a staff with 100 gold, and I took the dagger that another hero had and gave it to him because he threw his other one away. Griff the Barbarian has a battle axe, and I purchased for him a helmet, so he gets to defend with one extra. And he's the keeper of the coin, so there's there were 55 gold after I spent every everything I possibly could, so he's got 55 gold left. I figure he's got the most body points, so he's the least likely to die. Carrying it now, he had to ha he does have a potion of frost skin left over, which gives him two defense. I believe it's as long as he can still see monsters. Let's see, an Exodius, the alchemist, he does have uh, one vial of holy water with him, and I given him so instead of magic spells. Oh yeah, I'll explain that. So we have alchem alchemical skills here. So we've got the different uh, alchemical symbols. So we've got arrow instead of air. So he's going to get those. So there's the Warhog Bladder that makes you move faster. There's the Chinese Rocket, which you can use to blow up an enemy, or you can use to blast open a door. You've got the Gossamer Net that entangles a monster, causing them to lose a turn. So, pretty cool. He's got Pyro. So three of those. Greek Fire, always a classic, so two body points of damage, unless they roll five or six and two dice, reducing each hit by one point. Fire Lance, which is just like the other one, except it's one die, so up to one damage. The Berserker Brew, which allows the one who it's used on to roll two extra combat dice as long as they can see a monster at the end of their turn. So if you use it and you kill all the monsters in the room, you can run forward until you have more monsters in sight to use it again. And then Hydro. Three of those. So we've got the Healing Tonic, which restores up to four. We've got the Paralyzing Dart, which causes a monster to go into a, a fit of sleep. Now they can try to counter it immediately or on a future turn by rolling um, a six. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, they roll a six for each of their mind points. So I'm sorry. They roll one red die for each of their mind points. I <laughs> said it wrong. And it's been a little while. One red die for each of their mind points. If a six is rolled, they recover. And it can't be used on mutants, zombies, sasquatches. Um, yeah, so we've got some new monsters. I'll talk about that soon, too. And then the Flask of Fog, which allows you to move unseen past monsters. So that is what the alchemist has. He has those nine. And then the elven apothecary has Terra. Let's get the symbol for Earth there. He's got those three. Shellac and Mortar, which allows him to roll one extra 
combat die when defending or the one that you use it on. The Hyrax cage, which allows you to uh, burrow through walls. And then the medicinal herbs, which restore up to four. So the Elven Apothecary gets those. So let me just distribute these out here. And I always find myself wishing I had a bigger table. Okay, so the, as far as turn order, we're going to go like we did before. We're going to have Griff the Barbarian first. Exodius Majesticus the Alchemist will go second. Then uh, Dream Girl, the Elven Apothecary, and then White, uh, the Dwarf. So I just got to set it up here. Again, I'm going to use the larger character boards just because it's, it's much easier. So there we go. There's the classic. So we're going to have a mixture of classic and remake today and mods. Okay, we can set the wizard and uh, elf aside. Well, basically what I did was I just created equivalent uh, characters. I had a lot of fun doing it. And of course, as I always recommend to players, you know, if you've got your cards that you can use, put them face up prominently in front of you so that you know it, that they're available. And then when you're using them, you can like, put it to the side, kind of like a little Magic the Gathering trick there. And then when they're used up, you flip them over, just to remind yourself. And if you write it on the sheet, you cross it off the sheet as well. So yeah, there's extra equipment cards here this time. So those are prominently shuffled. So if you get equipment, you can draw one of these. And we've got our bag of tiles. Oh yeah, and what does the dwarf get? Well, let's find out, shall we? So the dwarf has two combat cards randomly drawn. And he has hidden reserves and footwork. So we're almost ready here. Now, uh, the idea of the combat cards was, okay, you've got the pure combat characters, and instead of getting like spells, they get these combat-related bonuses that they can use, and then they're used up. And I didn't invent those. That was uh, Ron Schertz and oh, that other guy, I always forget his name, but it's on Yield in, in the custom section. Pretty cool stuff. Parry and repost. Now, I think it's neat the uh, limited edition exclusive, which I wish it wasn't limited. Knight, Guardian Knight figure. So supposedly mine is going to be coming. Now, until it actually says delivered, I'm not really going to believe it. <laughs> I'm going to remain skeptical. But uh, that character, they did kind of a similar thing. You know, it's a pure combat hero. They gave him skill cards. And the skills are like combat and defensive related stuff, which I think is really a, a cool idea for a character. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a quest and we're going to use the layout of that quest to create our adventure. So we're going to put the doors out and the secret doors just revealed immediately, which is how uh, uh, Space Crusade does it. But we're not going to have any monsters out. So it doesn't matter what monsters or furniture that original quest had we're just going to remove all that because all of that work is going to be done by the tiles so you see on zargon's turn zargon really isn't another player all we're doing is we're drawing from the zargon deck that's these here so it's like a, a random event at the start of the turn 
all the tokens get to move and they're going to move towards the heroes. That's basically their behavior. They go for the nearest hero. And if uh, one hero is equidistant from a monster, uh, then each of them will roll one red die. And whoever has the lowest is the one that gets attacked. Or at least attempted to be attacked. So that's how it's going to go. But I mean, some of these tokens are going to turn out to be furniture. Some of them are just going to be nothing. So you never know. It could be a really hard game. could be a fairly easy game. But generally speaking, I'm going to be using the miniatures we've all come to know and love from this new remake. Which again, it, Hasbro, Avalon Hill, they barely changed anything. So it's going to be equivalent. So if you're playing the classic game, it's going to be the same same type of thing. So yeah, I'm going to use the remake dice. Um, actually, you know what? I wouldn't have to use the remake dice. I could use the classic dice. Because I've, I've got them right here. Let's see, which is easier to see? About the same size, just about. Yeah, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the remake dice back. I know some people like the squared corners better, but I don't. I, I like the rounded corners. I do have plans for these these dice though. I found a really cool technique. Uh, I just I have the super clean degreaser. Put these in a plastic cup, disposable plastic cup, and soak them for about a day. And the pips, the paint on these pips, that's the little dots, will come off. And it doesn't damage the plastic. And then I can clean that up. And then uh, I can put gold. Shiny gold in there. So shiny gold paint. And I'll actually show you the results that I got from my other dice here in a moment. You're going to see what we had going. I, I think the results are pretty good. Yeah, I'm just killing time as I'm pulling figures out here. I think you're going to be pleased with the results. Of course, I never know how many monsters I'm going to need. For all I know, there are going to be a lot. Basically, this time I'm going to uh, limit myself to 48 tiles. So 48 tiles instead of having, you know, 64 or 32. I think I'll be just right. All right, so we've got our, our uh, remake figures there. And I, I am going to have to step away from the mic just to grab some more stuff to show you what I've got going. So, get some new people. we got Freelancer117, welcome. Another TV viewer, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to do uh, some HeroQuest fans live stream if you're catching us on Twitch playing some hero quest using these homebrew rules homebrew mod here well i guess that's redundant to say that so i'm going to go ahead and grab a quest layout you know what i wonder if we could just use the layout of the brand new quest they just released this new beginning and don't worry i'm not going to spoil it this time i'm just gonna go ahead and uh show you here okay so i'm gonna have to set it up in real time here so just watch me set up a little relaxing vibe video i guess should put on some some soft music well i guess we do have to dig out the dig out the doors, dungeon doors. One second. So once again, we run into the problem of not having enough open doors, but don't worry, or enough closed doors, don't worry. Yes, the, um, the tiles, the shadow tiles, as I call them, are able to open doors. Once they turn into monsters, though, they can't. So we'll just put the door there, door here, here, let's see, 
here, and we'll have a double block square here. I mean, you could pretty much use any quest layout. I mean, unless it's a really wacky, like teleporting quest. Put a door here, here. Secret door, <laughs> not so secret because it's already revealed. Here, stone block here. Let's see door here, here. If you go through, you know, systematically, it's it's a little easier to keep track. I hate setting up a quest and then realizing, oh, I left out some big important room that was uh, a big part of the quest. Let's see, are you able to see all this? Doesn't really matter if you can see it or not because point is it's it's going to come out in the actual game. All right, so we've got stone blocks flanking that door there. And yes, this is a reproduction board. This is um a custom so a resized version of the classic board rather than the remake board. And then down at the lower level, there's going to be a stone block here. Another secret door here. Um, one guy was talking, I was talking to a couple different places. He was commenting on the canonical order of quests. And I didn't mean to jump down his throat on it. I just thought, you know, fan asks an honest question of Avalon Hill employee and says, what order should the quest be played in? You know, or what? what's the intended chronology of all the different quests? And so they gave an answer and it was like, OK, that's cool. But then I was thinking, yeah, but you're not really you're just giving an opinion. You're not really saying this is the order you have to play them in, because really not everybody is going to own for example, the mythic tier and having, you know, prophecy of Telor and all that stuff. Yeah, sure, they could find them online and uh, print them out themselves and just kind of make up for the fact that they don't have the extra miniatures and things. And just kind of make a homebrew version of it. But yeah, you add in the free quests, which weren't available in the first, you know, 30 years. And I don't know. I mean, there's different ways to do it because the if you look at the Barbarian quest pack and the Elf quest pack, I mean, you've got the, the solo quests, which are supposed to be for a brand new hero. So where does that, how does that work in the chronology? Is it a flashback? I mean, does does the uh, does the old Elf retire and a new one comes in? How does that work? So I mean, you can argue back and forth. And and the other th the other thought is, why not just play them in order of how difficult they are, regardless of when they were released? Because that way you're building and building and building. Assuming you're playing with the same gaming group, that's the other complication. What if it's different people? So you're going to have people that are brand new to the game, you're introducing it to them. I mean, that was what the solo quests were supposed to be for, but they ended up being way too difficult. And then this New Beginnings one is supposed to take the place of or be taking place before the trial because it's like yeah a lot of people admit that the trial is too hard for brand new players so the thought was not to diss on the trial but you play this other one which gives you some stuff that you can carry over into into the next one and use that and you know it kind of introduces you to the game a little bit easier before you get trounced because a lot of people played the trial and they got destroyed and that was like the last time that they played <laughs> You know, it, it happens. It's, you know, the maze is the maze is kind of too easy as a first quest. The trial is kind of too hard. So, all right. So I think that should be everything. Let me just make sure I've got it set up correctly. Not that it matters too much, but just so that, you know, every room connects to every other room that it's supposed to. So it looks like we're good there. I'm also not repeating any of the furnitures except for the spiral staircase. The idea behind this quest is in this one you're going everyone's going to start on the spiral staircase and they can also exit the quest through the spiral staircase. They can escape. But if they haven't cleared all the monsters from the board, then they don't get the extra re reward. They're going to get 500 gold coins for completing the quest. 
meaning they killed all the monsters, uh, including any wandering monsters they reveal. And if they exit before that, they don't get the reward, the extra reward. But they do get gold for any monsters they kill, and they get to keep treasure, any treasure they find from the searches in the treasure deck. So it looks like we are good. So now we can finally, and we'll create the chapter there most likely. So let me just readjust everything here a little bit. Yeah, there's our there's our monster, our chosen monster card. Whatever it happens to be, that's what we got. And this is uh, this is our alchemist. So there's a new miniature. Um, people may recognize that from Pathfinder Reaper miniature Pathfinder Alchemist. Really cool looking figure. I I just love it. I mean, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I know this is the the mod I'll be making. You can get autofocus to work. You can see the detail. And yes, I painted them in the solid color, so they kind of would vaguely match the other red characters. So, so here we go. Finally. We're going to start, and yeah, we start with a closed door. So we've got Barbarian, Alchemist, Elf, and Dwarf. And yeah, he's got a square base, and yeah, um, a little bit darker red, but that's okay. Makes it a little easier to distinguish on the board. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside. Let me just grab a couple of things. Now, if you think uh, Hero Quest is a lot of preparation, I mean, there's other games that have it worse, but normally I would have had everything set up, but I was at a kid's birthday party, so that's that's what held me up. But a fun time, fun day. So yeah, if you're just joining us, we're going to be playing some Hero Quest here. Okay, so first thing, we're going to read the little generic story. This is Mentor. My friends, I've discovered a new threat to the Empire with the help of Lore Tome. A series of enemy strongholds filled with fierce monsters concealed in the darkness, plotting um, our realm's overthrow. The Emperor has promised to pay bounties in gold for the destruction of these monsters, but their exact size and strength is unknown. You will journey to the stronghold and enter through one... Well, in this case, you'll enter through the spiral staircase. The only way out of this maze will be back through this, the spiral staircase. Each quadrant of the maze will reveal new shadows that could be monsters or harmless pieces of furniture. Should you succeed in clearing out the entire maze of these forces of chaos, the survivors who reach the stairway will be given an even greater reward. Tread carefully, my heroes. All right, so the way we're going to treat it is the central room is already revealed. Um, but for purposes of these new rules, the quadrants will have to be entered other ways. So it's not as if, oh, they're in the center of the room, we're going to reveal the entire board. So you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about here. Let's... Uh, Let's just uh, keep the chat open here so we can see what people are saying. Feel free to chime in. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to Striker667. Um, was our number one chatter last time, I think. Um, he says, I hate, hate that plastic holder for the figures. Yeah, I call it the candy tray. I bought some foam that will be picked can be plucked or picked to customize. Much happier now. Yeah. See, that, that foam stuff is so expensive, I didn't even bother. I mean, I figure these figures, in my opinion, my personal opinion, uh, these are very durable. I mean, you can manhandle this thing, and it's not going to break. I mean, you really would have to just be going out of your way to damage it. I mean, it's just, it getting banged around is not going to cause any problems. Now, where you might run into problems is if you paint it, and, you know, you want to varnish it really well because, yeah, as you're pulling it out of the plastic and it's scraping against other figures, because those are pointy, you know, age 14 and up because of pointy swords, it's going to scratch up the paint. So, you know, okay, foam. But, I mean, you can get this cheap stuff. I wish I had it within arm's reach. But, yeah, you can get really cheap foam and use it as a substitute. 
Um, let me just show you if I can reach it without knocking everything down. So when I, I order a lot of stuff online, but you can buy like just this stuff. It's like egg crate foam, I guess is what they call it. Cut that up with the scissors. Just it's, it's just works just as well. And it's, we're talking like pennies on the dollar versus that Feldar foam or that camera foam. But each to their own. I mean, if some people want it to look pretty in the box, like you open the box and it looks all pretty, which I guess if you consider gray to be pretty. Um, whereas me, I don't care if it looks like crap when you open the box. The point is it protects the stuff well enough so that you can play it. So, all right. So we're starting off the quest. Sorry for the uh, diversion there. This is why my streams take so long, but hey, you know, this is... This is why you're coming back, right? To hear me prattle on. Oh, I forgot the movement dice. <laughs> One more thing. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So we've got these dice here. Look how shiny they are with their nice gold pips. These are the dice that I soaked in that chemical to remove the the white pips and re add the gold paint and for that let's see I think I put it nope this is not a promotional video but this is the this is the thing I used this gold leafing pen and then I thought eh, it's not it's not quite right uh, it's not quite gold enough so I got this other chrome pen which I don't have on hand I grabbed it and I used that one and it to me, it, it catches the light just a little bit better. I mean, there it looks dull, but when the light hits it just right, I think that looks better than just plain old boring white. But for some reason, red plastic dice, especially with rounded corners, and gold pips are like really hard to find. I don't know why. They just don't make them, I guess, except for board games like uh, the original Hero Quest. All right, so we're starting the starting the game. First, we're going to get out our dice. We only need two of these movement dice, of course. So we'll just put set one aside. All right, so the Barbarian Griff. Nine. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. Opening the door. Which means I could use this closed door now for one of these other rooms, just to make it look cooler. I guess I could 3D print them to make it all perfect, but who's got the time for that right now? Okay, so he steps out. Five... Okay, now right away I run into an issue. What quadrant is he in now? Is he in the upper quadrant or the lower quadrant? Since there's only one corridor, it's a single corridor. I'm going to say... Actually, I think this might be determined by the quest itself. Yeah, because one of those is just solid rock. So it's going to be the upper quadrant. Okay, so the upper quadrant is going to have to reveal its secrets. So we're going to take out the old bag here. I'll just show it here. Now I got to reach in and as I pull it out, it's like, okay, do I see green? Okay, green. So it's going to be one. And we'll put out the tokens. So we're going to have 12. Yeah, so it works about to about three per room. So we're going to say one. Shuffled in the bag. I'm not looking at these ahead of time. A lot of them are. It's like I start to pull it out and I can see what it is. It's like, okay, I reach back in and try to get another one. Okay. Two. I guess one technique, I mean, if you were like ca carving them out of wood or something, you could put, you know, like Braille. You could put a little ridge on one side showing that's the shadow side. So that when you're feeling it with your fingers, you know that uh, 
to bring it out without looking at it. So that's three. So the point is, I want to be surprised when I take them out. So there's one. If you if you watch this on quadruple speed, I'll understand. <laughs> yeah, wait if you're watching on the replay. Two. Three. And uh, three, if I can reach it. Kind of a dark corner of the board. A little better. Oh, yeah, three more. One. And when I said line of sight, I meant it. So he, he's not going to be looking at stuff through stone blocks and things. Because there's stone blocks on either side of the barbarian there. Three. Okay. And yeah, if you were playing with four heroes, like four actual players, you know, one of them could be take over the duties of placing out the tokens. Okay. So we move one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Open the door. The door is already open. So now he can see into the room. Adjust the camera here. Let me just check the chat. See how we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So he looks in. Now he can see each of these. So let's flip them over and see what they are. Okay, that's an orc. See, there's a gold value there. So if he kills the orc, that's what he's going to get. So we're using the remake figures. Middle one is a fireburst trap. Uh-oh. And that's another orc. So the fireburst means that on the Zargon turn, so to speak, um, everybody in the room gets attacked with three combat dice. No defense. And it can only be disarmed. Well, I've decided that the dwarf can disarm it, or you could use a gossamer net um, on it to disarm it. But you can just run out of the room is the other thing. Okay, so he did that. He revealed that. Now he could go in. Let's see, what does the barbarian have? So he has a battle axe and a helmet. So he would have to run forward and fight. But then he's going to be subject to being attacked by that burst. So I think he's just going to stand there and block the door. Pretty evil. I mean, smart for a hero, right? Okay, so that's going to be his turn. Now, we've got the alchemist. So Exodius Majesticus gets a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. He didn't get very far. Dream Girl, the Elven Apothecary. Three. One, two, three. She's just in the doorway there. And now White, the Dwarf. Six. Yeah, the stairs are just considered one, one tile, one square. One, two, three, four, five, and he can't really get any further. Okay. All right. So now it's the Zargon turn, even though there's no actual Zargon player. I like playing as Zargon, but it's this this allows me to put on a show for you and actually challenge myself at the same time. So we're going to draw a card at the first, first thing, just like in Space Crusade, how you draw the alien event card. Distraction. After a hero declares an attack before rolling any dice, well, it doesn't really matter. It just means you'd miss if you attacked, but nobody's attacking, so pretty much no effect there. Uh, 
All right, what do we got next? Can actually move some of these tiles out of the way because they're not being used. Whoops, earthquake. Yeah, some of these doors, you can see the bottoms aren't truly flat. They kind of move around a bit. I guess you could dip them in boiling water, soak them in that, and soften them, then dip them in cold water. You don't have to flatten it out. It's an old trick that works well on Reaper Bones miniatures and anything made out of that like kind of rubbery, hard plastic. Okay, so did that. So now the, um, the blips, aka the shadow tokens, can move and soak in the monsters. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, let's see, or funnel them that way or the other way. Oh, I know what to do. Yeah, because they have a hive mind. They're actually smart. So this one up here is going to go one, two, and open the door. So this is a closed door here. And now this one gets revealed, so we're going to flip it over. It, I know it says it's a skeleton, but in this demagicified world, we've, we've got a Chaos Mutant. Pretty cool, huh? So that monster is revealed. This one is going to go one, two, open the door. Three, four, and it's going to stay there. This one is going to go one. Need longer arms. One, two, three, four. And then this one's going to go one, two, one, one, two. Yeah, we'll open that door as well. Just swap these out just to remind us that they're not open yet. And those others, I think, are just going to stay put for the moment. Now, the figure can still move. So let's see. These orcs each have eight movement, so they're going to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's going to go one, two, three, four, five into the corner there. Yeah, so the bad guys were forced to retreat because of the trap. So it does it does make a difference. Some people have complained about fire burst traps, saying that oh they're useless, you know. But if the monsters had stayed there and tried to attack, so they're forced to retreat, they would get hit and most likely destroyed. Now being in the doorway like that does protect you because it only hits in the room. If it's in a corridor, it'll hit up to six squares on each side. All right. Okay, so. Are they going to do anything else? Well, I guess they could start moving around. So one, two, three, open the door. Four, five, not in view yet. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, Two, three, four, five. Let me just adjust the camera so you can see a little bit better. All right, now it's time for the heroes again. Griff the Barbarian. 11. Turn it up to 11. Oh, <laughs> yeah, on this, on this turn, um, it's revealed and it's supposed to go off. Oh, yeah, so this thing goes off, boom, does nothing. Yeah. 
Now, I could have had it just go off immediately, but they moved out of the way. So I guess that's a judgment call on my part. Like, I could have decided, okay, as soon as it's revealed, it just kills the monsters. Like, you see it and it blows up. I can imagine that being in a video game. But I decided to let them run away. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you would have done it differently when you, you were playing. So, okay, 11. So he's going to step into the room. One, two, three, four, five. And he's going to attack the mutant. And now the mutant has the same exact stats as a skeleton, which means it defends with two and has one body point. Now the barbarian has his battle axe. So he's going to roll four attack dice. And he gets three skulls. And there's no way that the monster can defend against all of that because he only defends with two. And so he is destroyed. And we get to collect the first coinage. So we got 10, 10 gold for the barbarian. So he adds that to the 55 that he saved from last time after all the shopping was done. All right. That's all he can do. So the alchemist is going to go now. And he gets a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ah, uh, nine. Not quite close enough to um, poke with the staff through the doorway. Just take a swig of water. Cheers, dead gamer. Okay, now we're going to get, um, right on schedule here, we're going to get the Elven Apothecary Dream Girl. She's going to go 11. That's some good rolls for movement. Now, if we were running back to the stairs, we'd be getting like threes and fours. Just kidding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. And I think she's going to go ahead and might as well use shellac and mortar, get some uh, armor there. So she's going to use that. And yes, I know I put an extra F there. That was a misprint. That happens. So, so now she's going to defend with one extra until she takes one body point of damage. So it's going to be four because she's got a helmet <clears throat> and she's also armed with a long sword, by the way, which I purchased with the gold from last time. Okay. And so the dwarf white is going to go last, last, but not least three, ah, one, two, three. I mean, he's not wearing plate armor, but still, okay. All right, Zargon's turn. First, we draw the card. Alarm! Play this card at the start of your turn. An alarm goes off alerting nearby monsters. You may open any one closed door on the board and reveal its contents. Well, it kind of doesn't matter, but the way I'm going to interpret it using these rules is that we'll take one of the other rooms, like from a different quadrant, and we'll go ahead and put, uh, put those um, shadow tokens out. Now, to determine it, let's see, how many rooms do we have here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight potential rooms to do. So do we have an eight-sided die? Let's dig out the Dungeons & Dragons dice. Okay, so there's a ten-sided die. It's a five, uh, ten. It's four. It's a six. All right, this is a ten side or a eight sided die. I know you don't normally use these in HeroQuest, but okay, five. <laughs> yeah, it's a little uh, diamond shape. 
So five. So, oh yeah, I didn't tell you which ones, but yeah, I was going to number them like this, like starting at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five. So this room will be revealed and we'll put out five shadow tokens. Yeah, I'm still kind of getting the hang of my own system here. So we'll have three of them. Two. Gotta get one that I can't see. Okay, three. Now it says that it has to reveal the contents of the room. The problem is if I actually reveal what they are, they're going to be trapped in that room. So I think it's only fair that they stay as, as blips right now, as shadows. Blips are the term that they're called in uh, Space Crusade. All right. So now the rest of the turn. So what we're going to do is bring some of those orcs to bear against the heroes. Oh, they're so dark. Dark shadows. They need to glow in the dark. Okay, so one orc is going to go one, two in front of the door and attack the barbarian. The barbarian defends with three. The orc attacks with three. Ooh, three skulls. Wow. So he's got his three defense. Good thing he's got a lot of body points. Now, could he use his... Uh, Parry and repost. You're able to completely parry an attack without taking any damage and immediately follow up with a return attack. The opponent defends against your attack with one less combat die. That sounds really good. I mean, I know it's just an orc, but let's get let's see some action here. So let's say without even having to worry about rolling, immediately parry it. Boom. So he takes no damage. He can follow up with a return attack. That's four, and they defend with one less. So the orc normally defends with two. The orc's only going to defend with one. Right? So here's his counterattack. It's almost like Space Crusade, you know, with the melee attack. So two. Now the monster is only going to defend with one. So I think it's pretty much decided, yeah. That orc is, is destroyed. 20 gold collected by the Barbarian. And we're going to turn over his combat card. Parry and Repost has been used up. So yeah, as the combat monster of the group, he's collecting gold like nobody's business. Bounties. Of course, it's not, I mean, it's not instant gold. He's actually got to survive to cash it in. Cash in the bounty. All right, so uh, the first monster didn't fare so well, but now the other monster, the other orc, can move into position to try her luck against the barbarian. So you got a she orc here. Same stats as the male orc. She attacks with three. Attacking the barbarian. Two skulls. Barbarian defends with three. This time he's got to suck it up if he takes any damage. So two skulls. Two white shields. He blocked them both. ka -ching. Maybe that sounds like money to you, but to us it was... Uh, ching was, you know, it glancing off the armor. Blocking the hit. Hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Okay, now all of the shadows get to move, but they're not going to be able to move through, so maybe should they retreat before the onslaught? Because if they move into the room, it's going to be door blocking. Let's see, one, two, three, so there's one directly behind the orc, one, two, three, monsters can block doors as well. One, two, three, four, five. One, one. 
<laughs> now they, I mean, it, they might be furniture, they might be vermin, you know, they might be something completely harmless. But if it's a monster, it's going to be a strategy. And what what hero is going to want to plan their own demise? So maybe you still have to have Zargon in some capacity. But I really am trying to make it interesting here. It's almost like it's competition. So maybe a different a different hero player each time would take control of the of the blips of the shadows and just say no 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 don't put it there. It's like no 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 you put it put it where you want to. Normally they'd move towards the heroes, but I guess I'm doing my own thing here. One, two, three, open the door. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I guess to make the game last longer. Now these over here in this quadrant can move. Um, one, open the door, it's already open. Two, three, four, five, and we're going to open this door as well. And one, two, three, we're going to open that door, move to that room. One, two, three. Yeah. Now, if we were using the, the parlay deck, the um, lone monster deck, we could have some lone monster encounters. But I didn't grab it, so we're not going to use it this time. It's kind of an interesting way to toss things up, make it make it a little bit different. I think this will this will occupy our time pretty well. Okay. So we've done all that. Now it's time for the barbarian to show his quality. He's going to roll his movement first. Just get that out of the way. Seven. But first he's going to attack the orc there. In that doorway. He's attacking with his battle axe, his mighty axe. Two skulls. The monster defends with two. And since I didn't grab any chaos combat cards, they don't really have anything they could use. Now, it could be interesting to include those as well, maybe next time. But, you know, it's it's kind of like, it's not, it's not a really a passive ability. It's an active ability. So I blocked one and was destroyed by the other. So there's another orc. Another 20 gold. Collected by the by the barbarian. Now he could move. Oh yeah, this this one is revealed. This shadow tile, and it's a goblin. Worth a paltry five gold. Remake goblin. Let's put him right there. Does he move into the room? Yeah, might as well. I'm going to move into the room. One. Yeah, there's no point in moving any further. Okay, Alchemist. Two, Snake Eyes. <laughs> Uh, one, two, into the doorway. Didn't really go very far there. So I could move that, give you a little better view of the action. It's kind of a jury rig set up here. Okay, so the alchemist didn't get really get very far there. Let's uh, see what Dream Girl is up to. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's going to flank the goblin there.
can't like zoom right in on the on the fight. So flanking the goblin, and she attacks the long sword, which is three. I like the long sword because it has the diagonal hit ability. I mean, I've decided that the crossbow does not hit the four close diagonal squares. It has to be at least one square in between at a distance at range. Because that's really what it's intended for. I personally, that's my decision there. My call on it. And it's true in the Japanese version, spelled out. All right. Attacking the goblin. Two skulls. The goblin only defends with one, so there's no way the poor little thing ever had a chance. So that's five gold for potentially five bounty for the elf. Should have sat closer to the to the board here. And that's the first uh, bounty for the elf. This quest. All right, dwarf, white dwarf. Ten. Ah, I forgot about you, Lottie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right up to the door. Right up to the door. And so, obviously, this, this can now be seen. And it's vermin! Oh, no! It's a little rat. A rat scurries. Scurries uh, through the area and does nothing. And the alchemist grabs it and uh, captures and domesticates it. So there we go. So that was that. But now this other one can be seen. It is, I know, it looks like a mummy. But actually, in this mod, it's an angry chaos Sasquatch. So you thought Bigfoot was real. Well, now you know. Same stats as a mummy. And he looks, he looks angry. And we'll say that the one behind him can't yet be seen. So he went right up to the door. Um, did he have enough movement? It was 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I think that was, yeah, that was his maximum movement. Or 10, not 11, excuse me. But as uh, as things would go, he actually does have a crossbow. He's got a crossbow, a broadsword, and a helmet. So he can fire at the monster with three combat dice. Straight line. One skull. And it defends with four. And of course has two body points. One skull, uh, and one monster shield, one bunny of immortal evil. <laughs> so that was blocked. So no damage. All right, Zargon's turn. Moving right along. And I'm not shuffling these each time. I'm just I just shuffled at the beginning. Pit trap. Play this immediately after drawing it. So randomly pick a hero. That hero triggers an unseen pit trap. Place a trap tile on the board. Despite precautions, you spring an unseen trap. So now this one always seems to get us. Now there's four heroes. So how do we decide which one? Well, Dungeons and Dragons has us covered. We've got uh, four-sided dice. And I barely play d and I've hardly ever played it. But I like the, the dice idea. It's a creative way to come up with little uh, probabilities. So we're going to roll that. So it's going to be assigned just like in turn order. So one is the barbarian, two is the alchemist, three is the elf, and four is the dwarf. So that is a four. You read the one on the top. So the dwarf, I think he got it last time. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He gets, he gets the pit trap. So we should have a pit trap tile. There we go. So put that underneath them. So now there's a permanent pit that everybody has to worry about. 
I don't think he's got any card that can allow him to avoid that in any form or fashion. Yeah, footwork and hidden reserves. Okay, so he falls in and loses one body point. Ah! So he's down to six. I was just thinking, because a lot of these rooms are... Oh, I, I know how it's going to be. <laughs> One room is going to have 12 shadows in it. That's going to be nasty when they get to that room. All right. That's just how it goes. I mean, depending on what quest you choose, it's the results are going to be different. Okay. So a monster's turn now. or Yeah, we got to move the monsters now. Okay, so first thing, the Sasquatch is going to move four squares forward. One, two, three, and attack the hapless dwarf. Look, his, his paw is even reaching like through the door to get him. That's great. <laughs> All right, so he attacks with three. Defends with four, but he attacks with three. So he's attacking the dwarf. Oh, yeah. And when you're in a pit, you def attack and defend with one less. So I just have to remember that. And the dwarf has a helmet, so he'd normally have three. He'll defend with two in this case. Uh, one skull. So now he gets to defend with only two. Ah, but he, he still blocked it. Okay, so no damage there. We get to move the other blips, or shadows. Let's see, that's in a good spot. One... Mm. No. One, two, three, four, right behind it. They should move towards the towards the heroes. One, two, three, but they can't really do anything. Yeah, maybe the other one should move forward. So one, two, and then this one would end up moving one, two, three. Okay. Well, anyway, they're all in a line there. I know it's... <laughs> uh, you still you still get cramped squares. I mean, unless you're going to print a board that has, like, I don't know, 30 millimeter squares. It's going to be poss potentially cramped. These others, where are they going to go? Let's see. They really could go the opposite direction. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The nice thing about this, similar to Space Crusade, is that it's not necessarily necessary to explore the entire board and search every single room. As long as you know where the monsters are and once they've all been eliminated, you can just make your way out. Feels a little more efficient. Not that there's anything wrong with the old system, but um, when you're playing solo, if you can save a little time, it is nice. And now these have to move. So let's see. It could go the long way. I guess that's the only way they're going to go if they want to attack the heroes. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five. What am I doing here? Oh, no, they can't go that way. See, so they go here. Okay, that's how they go. All right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Out the secret door. Yes, they can do that. One, two, three, four, five. And that's all the monsters are going to do. Oh, yeah. You can get to see that. But yeah, I've got one out there, there, there. Okay, hero's turn. The barbarian is pretty far away. 
they're gonna have to jump that trap. I think he's just gonna stay where he's at this turn because he should be actually right up against the door. And the alchemist is going to step into the room. It's four. So it's kind of like I'm skipping the barbarian's turn. One, two, back there. Elven apothecary. Four. Now she's got a long sword, so she can go one, two, three in the corner here and she can poke through the door at the monster because it's a diagonal attack. I know it's really cramped there. Again, these are one inch squares with the reprinted uh, board. So it's going to be three attack at the monster. So the Sasquatch is facing two skulls. And the Sasquatch will roll four in defense. Uh, one def one blocked and one hit. So, you know, one uh, hit means we got to place a skull tile underneath the monster. If I have a skull tile to do that with. Hmm, I thought I had some on hand. There's a skull tile. It was hiding in plain sight. So there's our skull tile. So that indicates one hit. Oh. I'm just gonna... <laughs> right there. It's like the leaning tower of monster right there. Okay, we'll just pretend, <laughs> pretend that he's in the doorway there. Um, yeah. There we go. Let me just check something real quick here. I know somebody who might want to check out the stream pretty soon. Oh yeah, welcome to Zero Axe 2. We love marbles, Lori Pub. If I didn't say welcome already, welcome. I'm just gonna get the link to the stream here and send it off. Yeah, if you know anybody that is a HeroQuest fan, you know, share the share the link to Twitch with them, share the YouTube link with them. I mean, I say more the merrier. Not everybody's going to agree with everything that I do here. That's fine. Um, I like to hear other people's opinions. I like to see other people's projects. Um, but yeah, if it if it's enjoyable for you, you know, spread the word. I appreciate it. Okay. So after the elf wounded but did not destroy the Sasquatch, we've got the dwarf. All right, we got five movement. He can step out of the trap. Ah, that's what he'll do. He'll step out of the trap and use his crossbow because he can shoot right over the top of it. So he leaves the pit. One, two, three. And now he's going to shoot all the way across at the monster with three. Two skulls. Sasquatch defends with four, being the big hairy beast that he is. In my lore, I decided that, okay, Bigfoot exists in this world, but he's like a gentle giant. But the alchemists of chaos, you know, they capture these creatures and they 
inject them with chemicals and make them crazy and mean and nasty. So that's how it, how it works. All right, uh, no defense, so the monster is destroyed. So that's 50 gold for the barbarian. Not the barbarian, 50 gold for the dwarf. Excuse me. 50 gold for the dwarf, and he well earned it too. So that's his first bounty, this quest. So now they've all acquired something except for the alchemist. Has not gotten anything yet. And it's kind of like, you know, the wizard hanging back. Does he use his spells? So does the alchemist use his skills now, or does he wait for the big fight? Because it may never come. Who's to say that we're going to get any gargoyles or chaos warriors? I mean, who's to say, right? We don't know. Okay, and now that that monster is killed, these monsters, or at least the first one, will be revealed, and it's a goblin. So we'll put another goblin in there. Remake goblin. Okay, so now it's the chaos player's turn. It's his Argon's turn. Draw the card for him. Miss! Well, your attack misses. I mean, some of these cards really don't apply because it's not like in real time. It'd be nice if like retroactively, if it's like the monster comes back because you missed. But, okay, so now we get to move everything. Now monsters automatically jump traps, so that goblin has no problem rushing into battle. And technically should attack the elf first, but that means he's going to attack with one less. It's kind of silly. <laughs> Just for laughs, we're going to do that. So the goblin rushes in one, two, three, huh? I'm in this hole now. And the goblin is going to attack the elf with one less. So instead of attacking with two, he's attacking with one. Really dumb monster, right? Well, can't blame him. He doesn't have many mind points, but still gets one skull. Uh, so the elf is going to defend with three because she has a helmet. So he's got to just beat one skull. Ching! Blocked it. So no problem there. All right, what's next? We're going to move this one. One, two, let's see. One, two, three, four. There's no room. Five to attack the barbarian. Oh, but it's equipment. <laughs> so it's not attacking anybody. It's, it's an equipment draw right there. So we've got our handy equipment deck. Now I've decided, you know, the person has to basically search and then they get to draw one of these cards. But they've just got to land on the square first is all all they got to do. Okay, other tokens. So these one, two, three, four, five, that shadow moved there and cannot yet, well, Yeah, the, the goblin's blocking the path, so I'm going to say that can't be seen yet. One, two, three, four, five. Up there. One, two, three, four, five. There. And then way in the bowels of the dungeon down here. One, two, three, four, five. Just at the edge of the camera. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's all we can do for the chaos side. All right, Griff the Barbarian. Five. Now, he could be kind of a jerk and uh, sit on that equipment so no one else can get it. But I think he's going to be a, a nice guy while he's being a boss. And he's going to go one, two, three on the opposite side and flank that goblin. 
and that goblin's going to have no chance because he's going to attack with four. Now, your defend dice can never go below one, so it's not like he's going to defend with zero, like a Gretchen in Space Crusade. <laughs> he's still going to get to defend with one. So we lucked out there. Uh, two skulls. He's getting, well, even if he gets a black shield, he's going to be dead. Yeah, didn't matter. Okay, so he just collected five bounty. And no, he doesn't have to go down into the pit to get it. So he's totally cleaning up. Now, if you, I guess you were really playing this Space Crusade style, then uh, Zargon would get points every time the heroes got killed. But what would he use the gold for? To buy reinforcements in the next quest? I mean, who, who knows? But yeah, it's not quite quite the same system. Okay, so the Barbarian moved. Now we've got... And Exodius Majesticus is just going to pick up the spoils. So four... One, two, and go ahead and search for treasure, meaning he gets to draw an equipment card. So these have been shuffled. And he's going to go ahead and draw one. Plate mail. But of course, he can't use plate mail. So he's going to, it may not be worn by the wizard, but he can give it to whoever he wants. So there's nobody, nobody close enough, nobody adjacent for him to give them, give it to them. So he's just going to hang on to it for the moment. But that was a kingly gift. Plate mail is very strong. Say plate. All right, now we've got the elf. Oh yeah, and this, uh, this shadow can be seen. It's a fire burst. So it should go off on the the bad guy turn. Okay. So uh, I guess then the dwarf could roll, but he's not going to want to go in the room. Oh, well, he could go in to try to disarm it. It's got to be inside the room. Nine. Okay. One, two. Oh, he's going to jump the trap as well. Now, <laughs> I just realized that. He's got to jump the trap. Okay, so there's a trap there. But see, he's got to do it either way to disarm it. Because this thing will blow up and then he won't need to disarm it. Can he see through the fire burst to see the monster on the other side? A potential monster? Because what is the fire burst trap? Is it just like a fog or something in the in the room that's going to explode? It's a little glowing ember that's like about to overload. I guess I haven't thought about it. Well, for now, we're just going to say it blocks the way. Okay, so he's going to try to jump the trap, which means he's got to roll anything but a skull on one, on one uh, white die. Ah, oh, he rolled a skull, so he fell in. Back into the pit. Ah! So he loses another body point. So he's down to five. Pretty silly. Okay, so now it's the um, chaos turn. Let's see, we'll draw a card. Lure of chaos. Well, we don't have any henchmen. Uh, so otherwise they'd turn into a chaos warrior. That would have been a cool card. But they basically they just get a reprieve if the card is not something that can be done. So the fire burst explodes, doesn't hurt anybody. It's removed from the board. Okay, now the monsters get to move. Or the shadows one, two, three, four, five, and what is it? It's an orc. So we place an orc right there by the dwarf. Let's use an orc with an axe this time. So he's got him right where he wants him because being in the pit, as we know, means one less. So the orc attacks with three. Yeah. 
one skull. I was just thinking, oh, the wizard, the wizard, the alchemist could have given him a uh, plate armor, but only you can only give something on your turn. You can't just like give it any time you're adjacent. So one skull, and the dwarf is going to defend with only two. Nothing. So he loses another body point. So he's getting whittled down. He's down to four. All right. This other shadow is going to move one, two, three, four, five, right behind the, the orc. And we've got our other shadows down here. They're going to advance one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, they can leapfrog each other. Doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five. Did we get them all? I think so. Yes, we did. Okay. Heroes. Now, the Barbarian doesn't really have, let's see, anything he can do at this moment. I guess he could stand aside. Let's do a little token movement. Six, but, I mean, he's going to move back one. Alchemist is going to move forward. Two. <laughs> okay. One, two, and so it's like they switched places. And we can get that equipment tile out of there. It's been used up. And I'm not returning these tiles to the to the bag. I'm just setting them off to the side, the ones that are used up. I mean, it doesn't affect the probability that much. I've got over 100 tiles in there. Okay, so now what the alchemist is going to do is hand the plate mail down to the dwarf. So he can put that armor on. I don't think that takes an action to put it on. So he'll have two more. So he'll defend with five. He's in the pit. He'll defend with four. So at least I'm doing something for him. Now we've got the elf can actually attack through the doorway once again with the long sword with no penalty. One skull. Orc defends with two. Nothing. So that orc is destroyed. Only one body point. 20 gold for the elf. All right, and she could move, but she's got to jump the pit trap. You know what? I think we're just going to wait because otherwise we're just going to have a pile of heroes in that uh, pit trap, I have a feeling. Okay, so the dwarf could try to move. Actually, this is his best chance to get out of there. Just leaving a pit trap is free. 12 boxcars. Oh, yeah, and this is revealed. It's another goblin. Use the female goblin this time. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He has plate armor, so we only count one of those dice. Well, thankfully, they're both sixes, so he gets a six, not 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's blocking the other door. Yeah, I forgot about that. It, it cuts your movement in half, so he only moves with one red die, not two, while he's wearing the plate armor. Because it's not Boren's armor, and he's not a knight or a paladin. All right, now it's time for the gas turn. Ambush. Place the quest wandering monster anywhere next to the hero. If a hero moves through a corner or through a doorway well technically the the dwarf just did uh, as you're walking a monster stalks you and attacks so now we get to reveal what the wandering monster on this quest was i haven't peeked and i've i've just kind of forgotten about it in all the excitement so this is the card let's see what it is <gasps> 
It's a goblin. <laughs> so it's like the weakest monster that you could think of. All right. So a goblin is going to appear and, out of the shadows and attack the dwarf. Actually, probably should attack through the doorway. Yeah, it just says next to the hero. It doesn't say it has to be in the same room. Okay, so the goblin only attacks with two. No skulls. Completely whiffed. Okay. So now we get to move... I mean... Having the monster appear and attack immediately is basically its turn already. So the other monster gets to move forward. Monsters automatically jump traps, but you know what? We're just going to say... Oh yeah, and wandering monsters don't give any gold. Attack the... Uh... Yeah, because the dwarf was closer. Attack the dwarf. Attack with two. One skull. Dwarf defends with five. I mean, you could select different monster behaviors. Say they attack the one with the most body points, or the most defense, or the least, or whatever. One skull. Uh, yeah. He easily blocked that. Defended it. And now we're going to move these other shadows. Shadows move one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So they're making their journey towards the heroes, towards the, the source of the combat. By the time they get there, these monsters will be wiped out, but we'll see what happens. All right, that's all the chaos player can do. Like he has turn. Barbarian is he's gonna try to jump the trap. Okay, jumping the trap. He's gotta get the movement first, so we got six. Okay. So now he's gotta roll anything but a skull and one white die to jump the trap, otherwise he falls in. Ah, he actually avoided it. Okay. So let's see. One, two, three, four. And jumping the trap is not an action, so he gets to attack Goblin with the Battle Axe. Yeah, saving the gold from the last quest really helped. Uh, two skulls, Goblin only rolls one defense, so there's no chance. So that's five more for the Barbarian. cleaning up all right after the barbarian is the alchemist once again ten hmm got to try to jump the trap we're all doing it anything about a skull ha ah. okay 50% chance. One, two, three, four, five. He's just going to go right in the corner there. And so he can use his staff to poke through the door diagonally to attack the goblin. Now, here it's a little more evenly matched because the staff is only one attack die. This is not the alchemist staff. This is just the basic staff. Oh, missed. Did nothing. So it's like shooting the eight ball in the corner pocket he missed scratch you lose just kidding this isn't pool all right now the elf now <laughs> the elf could avoid the pit by using pass through rock it'd be a creative use but you know what she hasn't really been hurt yet so she can take it just try to jump the trap Got enough movement 
And now just have to avoid rolling a skull. Wow. Oh. See now, I, I keep rolling black shields. Those would be good rolls for monster defense. Okay, so 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six in the corner there and use the long sword through the doorway. One skull. Goblin defends with one. No defense, goblin is killed. But since it's a wandering monster, there's no bounty for the wandering monster in this scenario. Now you could do something where you say the the wandering monsters are worth more, like maybe they're worth double or something. That oh, that'd be a cool rule. Maybe oh yeah, you roll another die and that would tell you is it double, is it triple? You probably want to use a D&D &D dice for it or something so it wouldn't be too outrageous. I mean, imagine it being like six times the gold <laughs> for a wandering monster. Like um yeah, it'd be six times the value. So, yeah, like 30 gold for a goblin. But yeah, Chaos Warrior would be worth uh, 600. Okay, so uh, Dwarf. Sorry, just losing my train of thought there. Eight. So the Dwarf is going to go through the door. Oh man, but we got to go back over that trap on the way home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it would be so boring to just wait for those monsters, really, wouldn't it? And we're basically saying they have to explore the whole board anyway, so it's not like they can just wait for all the monsters to show up. Okay, so that's the end of that turn. So now we go to the chaos turn. Draw the card. Chaos energy. Well, there's no monsters to heal, so that's wasted. And now we'll move the shadows again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. Still out of sight. Out of sight. Okay. Griff the Barbarian. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of like if Marty McFly went back to the Middle Ages in Back to the Future Part 4. Why didn't they ever make Part 4? I guess it was a self-contained story. I mean, Part 3 kind of wrapped everything up. I actually liked uh, Back to the Future Part 3 better than Part 2. A lot of people disagree with me on that, but whatever. I mean, they're not perfect movies. They're kind of fun. But it's, I think it's best not to watch them back to back because they kind of riff on the same moments. They take like the greatest hits of the first movie and they repeat them in two and three. So it can get a little, a little, a little boring, a little repetitive if you watch them like do a marathon. That's just my personal opinion. Okay, so uh, we moved all those guys and Barbarian. Seven. Haven't revealed any furniture yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, still haven't quite made it. No diagonal weapon, just a battle axe. Alchemist. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm almost thinking, like, just go ahead and start using your your powerful skills why not just finish these monsters off and win but it's not so easy because um i know that they moved through those doors but we didn't reveal all the shadow tokens um so there's one two three more rooms four rooms actually oh yeah since we've moved into a new um Technically, as, as excuse me, technically, as soon as he moved over on this side, he should have triggered. So I need to put I need to put those out. 
Um, so even though we're in the midst of, you know, the alchemist moved out, um, let's, let's go ahead and put them out. Sorry about that folks. So I should have, I should have put, uh, the rest because again, these were just from a special occasion from that one, that one room. So there should be three of them in here and yeah, they're going to be revealed right away because he can see them. And he used the maximum movement anyway to get there. And same way with this this other room here. And again, I'm not I'm not peeking. I'm not peeking at these. Just trying to get the green side up as I pull them out of the bag. Okay, there's three there. Six. Oh yeah, it was nine. Should be twelve for each uh, for each side. Takes a little while to get them all. Yeah, I suppose I could I could just control the narrative by uh, by peeking at them and putting out the ones that I think would be cool. But I'm trying not to do that. Instead, I want it to be a surprise for myself, just just like uh, the audience. So three, six, nine. So it should be twelve. So there's gonna be one, there's actually gonna be four in each room. Shake up the bag. I keep uh, pulling and, and seeing what they are. Okay, so we're gonna put four. Four. And then one more and we're finally, have, we'll put them all out. Okay, I'll just put it in the corner there. Okay, sorry, that took longer than I thought. Okay, so, and and these should be revealed. Well, technically, the barbarian can see that. So this one should have been revealed right away. So it's an orc. So we've got an orc here. Use the female orc there. The orcus. And we're going to reveal these. Okay, a scroll. Now for the scrolls, those are going to be alchemist items. And I've got an alchemist item deck, which I'm particularly proud of. Zombies are still zombies. They're just alchemical zombies. Except I seemingly forgot to pull the zombie out. I'm sorry. Let me go get a zombie figure for this. And can you see that last one? Can you see through the uh, alchemist item? Yes, I think you can. Oh, a gargoyle. <laughs> the powerful gargoyle. And we might as well put out these other monsters while we can here. Orc. And I'll be right back with a zombie. And yes, I do think the uh, mythic zombie looks way better than that one the basic one that comes in the retail set, but I'm going to just, since I, I don't want to dig it all out, I'm just going to put it there. So, oh yeah, and I can adjust the camera so you can actually see the action, because that's what you came for. It's like the meeting of the two cameras.
There we go. Now we're really getting into it. Okay. It reminds me of those wrestling video games, you know, when you're playing the um, WWE, like Royal Rumble, and, you know, you've got 20 guys on the, on the in the ring, and they're just, you know, it's all zoomed out. But then as people get eliminated, the camera pulls in closer and closer and closer until finally it's just, you know, three of them left, two, and then who's going to be the winner? You know, Much cooler than watching it on TV. On TV, it's kind of boring, but, yeah, this isn't a wrestling channel. All right. So, uh, let's see. We're still actually in the middle of the hero's turn through all this. I know. I know. The barbarian can't really do anything anyway because he doesn't have the range to hit any of those monsters. But the alchemist just went. Hmm. Yeah, nobody can... He, he can't see through the dwarf to... I mean, yeah, even though the dwarf is short. He can't see through the dwarf to get to the barbarian to uh, use the um, berserker brew on him. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just move the elf. <laughs> the elf has just been waiting patiently for all this. I'm going to zoom out. Okay. Ten. I'm not sure what this, there isn't a fancy name for this, is there? Is it like pepper boxes or, I don't know, 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Didn't, didn't get all the way there. Okay. Dwarf. Oh, yeah. i got to remember... Wearing plate armor, so one red die. Didn't see that, but it was a five. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, but he's got a crossbow. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, 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 wait. With a five. He can hit the uh, gargoyle. Yeah. I'm going to pull out my um, aiming stick here in just a moment. All right, if you're just joining us here on HeroQuest fans, welcome. We're in the midst of a deep uh, battle here in the dungeon using the solo rules that I came up with, inspired by Space Crusade. So hello and welcome to any new viewers we might have. Actually, yeah, we didn't get any new. Oh, Lana Ray is, is back. Welcome. I knew there was somebody new. Okay. So yes, this is inspired by the uh, the old uh, Warhammer 40k idea. You know, you just take a bamboo skewer and paint it red. So can he shoot from here and hit the gargoyle? Yes, it appears he can. So using the crossbow, three against the gargoyle. Yeah, two skulls. Now the gargoyle defends with five. So two skulls, got to beat that. All right, what do we get? Uh, two skull. No defense at all. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a white shield. So... Two skulls, so two damage to the gargoyle. We're going to need some skull tiles for that. 
because they have three body points normally. All right, so we got two skulls here. I know, it's is it really necessary to put them underneath the figure? Well, that's, that's the default rule. So we'll reach way over here with the two skulls there. It's kind of hard to stack it all. Oh, it, it worked. Okay. Okay, so that was a that was a fine hit. A fine hit. Okay. And now I think the uh, same actor who played Gimli in Lord of the Rings played the tree bird voice. I could be wrong about that, but that sounds familiar. Like it would have been the same voice. Somebody can tell me if I'm wrong on that. And Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. I guess it would be the um, Two Towers. Yeah. The one with the tree ants. Okay, Chaos turn. Log Trap. Ah, oh, this is a favorite of uh, bad guys everywhere. Play it immediately. Suddenly a spiked log rolls from the ceiling. Pick any three squares in a row on the board. Any hero or monster on these squares must roll one combat die. They lose one body point on a skull. Okay, so three in a row... Well, I mean, it's kind of like, what's it going to be? So it, the one that would hit two heroes would be this one right here. One, two, three. So there, there should probably be an automatic way to decide that. But, uh, yeah. So first the Barbarian's going to roll for damage. Roll the skull. He takes one hit. So he's down to seven. That was the first hit he's taken. Elf is going to roll for damage. No damage. So she is unarmed. All right. So after the log trap, which was nasty, but uh, wasn't as bad as it could have been. Now the other monsters are going to get to move. So I think first we're going to naturally move this orc forward to attack the barbarian attack him with three okay uh one skull he's going to defend with three because he's got a helmet uh yeah he got one white shield so he blocked it Now we've got three monsters here. So this orc is going to move forward and attack the dwarf with three. Now he is wearing plate armor, so he's got a lot of defense. So don't feel the least bit sorry for him. One skull, and he's going to defend with five. Because he's got not only... Um, Wait a minute. He's got his two base defense, plus two more, plus a helmet. Yeah, five. That's right. He's got a helmet and plate mail. Plate mail adds two plate armor. Uh, cha-ching! There. Yeah, he blocked everything. Now the zombie is going to move forward. Let's see, who's he going to attack? The dwarf is has a lot less, so. But if he attacks the dwarf, he's gonna stop the gargoyle from being able to attack, because it can't attack diagonally. Hmm. Yeah, I think the gargoyle. I mean, the gargoyle's weakened. The gargoyle's gonna move forward instead. <laughs> These tiles are a pain. I'm just going to leave those tiles in the corner. One, two, three, four, five. Right in the doorway. Because you can't pull the wings off this uh, gargoyle. You'd need uh, 
pliers or something. You'd have to remove the glue first. And is going to attack the dwarf with four. Using the bad guy dice. Which have the same odds as the white dice. I just They're just a different color to set them off. Set them apart a little easier. Attacking the dwarf. Uh, let's see. One, Only one skull. Dwarf defends with five. Ah, blocked. <laughs> yeah, it's like in both cases, I'm like, come on, you got to get at least one. Okay, so that zombie is kind of left out in the cold. That's okay. That's the way he likes it. And all of the shadows get to move. So we'll just move the camera down. One, two, three, four, and it can be seen. Flip it over, it's a goblin. One, two, three, four, five, can't be seen yet. Yeah, there, now these, all these others get to move. One, two, open the door. Three, four, can't really move more than that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. These others over here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And yes, they can move through secret doors. Not so secret in this module. So yeah, it's getting uh, to be quite a mess over there. We've got a gargoyle, a zombie, and an orc in that room. And that pile of debris is just because I didn't want to reach and stack that stuff over and over again. Now, if I were sitting at a proper table, playing a proper game with a bunch of proper people, in a proper manner, of course, I would not hesitate to jump up and run around the table to, to do it. Or use the old back scratcher to push the stuff around, just like a plotting rod. Just like in those Cold War movies, World War II movies. Just checking the stream here. All right, so if you've been following thus far, we've now done all of the Zargon turn. And now we're going to go back to the heroes who have plenty of targets of opportunity. So the Barbarian is just going to go, let's see. Yeah, he's going to go for the Gargoyle because his buddy, the Dwarf, is going to be in trouble if he doesn't score some hits on that gargoyle I mean yeah he's got one body point left so if he can wipe him out that's a major threat removed oh that one didn't count okay we're gonna re-roll one of those just because it fell out of the box so we got two skulls yeah still only two skulls seems like there's a little bit of a delay in the camera so just wait a second there we're not frozen are we nope oh there's just a major delay sorry about that okay so we rolled and we got two skulls against the gargoyle the gargoyle defends with five so i'm rolling for the gargoyle now And the gargoyle got two black shields. Okay. So pretty good there. So blocked everything. Hmm. Now the barbarian could move out of the way. 
but he doesn't have to because the elf can actually move forward and attack through the doorway. But does he want to do that? Because the alchemist could move into the... Oh yeah, the alchemist could move. But then the elf isn't going to be able to move. Yeah, let's uh, let's move the alchemist up. Finally he gets to do something. Not that he wasn't doing stuff before, but just uh, help his comrades out in battle. His compa compatriots, excuse me. Seven. One, two, three, four. Actually, this might be a good time to do a couple of things. Let's see. He can see the barbarian. He can see the gargoyle. Maybe just uh, courage on the barbarian. Or in this case, it would be the berserker brew is what it's actually called rather than courage. Berserker brew. Here we go. So there's the card. So two extra combat dice. Now that'll be the next time he attacks until he can't see any more monsters at the end of his turn. So we'll tap that one, use it. And now uh, the Elven Apothecary is not gonna be able to do anything. <laughs> Actually, uh, Let's 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 roll for movement first. Four. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Okay. I'm just anticipating a disaster here as well. Okay, so the Elven Apothecary is going to use the Hyrax Cage, release that little critter, and burrow through the wall. Then move four, so one, two, three, right into the room. And so now it's used up. Now she used up her action, so she can't do another thing. And I'm forgetting, yeah, I mean, potions and other things they could use. I forgot, the elf actually has an alchemist item, Gossamer Net. So let me show you the card I'm thinking of here, because it would make more sense if you could actually see what I'm talking about. So in the um, the magic version, they're called spell scrolls. In the demagicified version, they're called alchemist items. So that's an alchemist item. Pretty cool, huh? And it's like a dumbed down, like MRE, like uh, instant use, uh, you know, tear off package. And anybody can follow the simple instructions. So the Gossamer Net is basically like Tempest. But uh, the Elf has this. Um, but it uses an action to use this. So I can't use it yet. But I just got to remember that I've, that I've actually still got it. And the Alchemist actually has... Uh, a paralyzing dart, which is just like sleep. And so since he has the regular ability, um, it's just that. So that's what the alchemist has. He has uh, one of these. Because these can be used by anyone, and you can pass it because it's, it's an item. I mean, it's just a pouch. You know, you rip it open and use it. Single use. But um, it's cool to have an extra one. You know, just like if you had two ball flames, you could use it twice. Okay, so after the elf is the dwarf. Now he is blocked in, so why bother with his movement? Okay, fine, he got seven. But first he's going to have to fight his way out of there. So I think I used uh, the berserker brew on the barbarian. So that means two extra attack for him. 
means he's going to attack with six. Wow. But for now, the dwarf just has his broadsword crossbow. Well, I mean, he could fire his crossbow at the zombie, believe it or not, from where he is. Because he can fire diagonally, once again, right through the crowd, right through, hit the zombie for three. Or he could use his broadsword to try to take out the immediate threat. I think he's going to go for the, the gargoyle, because that gargoyle could do a lot of damage to him. So Dwarf is going to attack the gargoyle. Oh, sorry. Two skulls. See the ones on the left? It's two skulls. Gargoyle is going to defend with five. It's got to beat two skulls. Um, blocked one. And that's it. So one of them gets through and kills the gargoyle. So boom. Gargoyle goes down. And the bounty was, believe it or not, 150 gold. And uh, yes, I'm getting these straight from the Japanese version of HeroQuest. So we get to remove that. So that was quite a, quite a coup for him. So 150. thing about the bounties is they can't really be transferred. I mean, once you cash in your gold, you can use it for whatever you want. You know, buy something for your friend or whatever. But I was thinking maybe the reward should be based on, like, who gets the most kills, most monster kills. But then that sort of implies the barbarian's always going to get it because he does the most fighting, or the dwarf, I guess. But the alchemist or wizard could do, you know, use his powers to to get get some more possibly and it's it's the one that does the the finishing blow it's not necessarily the assist although that'd be a cool thing to do to do as well i'm not trying to make the game too complicated but there's all kinds of things you can do with hero quest i mean it's endlessly expandable pretty much just limited by your imagination and whether you're willing to print out some extra cards or tiles or whatever okay so we eliminated the gargoyle and that was the end of the hero's turn okay that took a little longer so we're going to draw a zargon card map one of the heroes may pick an unexplored room the contents of this room must be revealed without opening the door read a lot of the following text you find a map with details of the dungeon now the thing is though in if you're playing a regular game you could basically trap monsters in the room because they can't open the door but these shadows can open doors so we're basically just revealing it so uh, you know what I, I have to pick a room you know some room somewhere i guess i'll pick the one that's farthest away so that the monsters have a long way to go to actually get to us so let's uh, pick this room so, oh, and why did I do that? <laughs> because I, that's going to be 12. I didn't even think about that, but I just realized it. Well, it's too late now. So we're going to have to put 12 in there. Now, we haven't yet entered this last quadrant, so there's going to be still some in this. Let me zoom out again. This quadrant here, so... One, two, three. There's going to be three, six, nine. Uh, three, six, nine, twelve. Oh, we already revealed one of them. So three. So there's going to be nine. Three, six, nine. Um, but yeah, there's going to be twelve in this room here. Okay, so this will take me a little while to get all these out of here. So we're going to go one. And two. And three. And four. And 
and five and six <laughs> and seven and eight and nine Reach deep in the bag here. And 10. And 11. And 12. Ah, 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 ah. Just imagine uh, thunder and lightning happening at this moment. Special effects budget was slashed. Okay, so there we go, because this is the only room in this quadrant, really. So I had to put all 12 of them there. It's kind of like Space Crusade, where they decide, oh, yeah, I just I guess I got to put all my tokens out, and they just pile them up. It's like, oh, man, really? But, I mean, for all you know, this could be a massive treasure. It might not be monsters. Or it could be a bunch of Chaos Warriors. <laughs> I mean, look, you've already got all these. So, okay. So we did that. Now we've got to move everything. This is going to take a while. So I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Just checking the stream here. Talk about a gauntlet for the heroes. But still, they're facing far fewer potential monsters than they were the last the first time I played using these rules. Just gonna refresh the Discord here. I think we lost the No, we got the Discord back. So Amalgamash apparently is trying to acquire the uh, bunch of game books. Well good hunt good hunting, sir. Some of those are gonna be pretty pricey. I've checked. But, I mean, it's for me, it's about the nostalgia. Like, I want to see the ones from the series that I remember. I want to see the ones that I remember reading. You know, going to the library as a young whippersnapper and checking those books out. You know, choose your own adventure and which way and pick a path and find your fate. And um, Wizards, Warriors, and You and Space Ace. Um, there were a lot that I didn't know about. But, yeah, I could, you could do a whole uh, whole video on game books. There was a lot of them released in other countries that you know I never knew about. Oh yeah, uh, Lone Wolf, of course. Um, Time Machine, um, Way of the Tiger. Those were pretty brutal for a young reader, but I mean, you felt like you were cool reading it, like as a young adult. Okay, so I got to move all these monsters. Well, first I might as well attack with the monsters I've got. So let's zoom in on the where the action is. So now the heroes are going to need all the all the tricks that they've got. So the orc is going to go ahead and attack the dwarf there. All right, one skull. He's going to defend with his five, his usual five. Okay, did he get any? Yes, he got a bunch of white shields there. So we blocked everything. The orc could move out of the way. But you know what? Why bother? Let's just have... Well, he's going to force the dwarf to use up his movement, I suppose, is the thing. But he can still shoot him with a crossbow, so yeah, it doesn't matter at all. He's just going to stay put. The zombie is going to attack the elf. Zombie attacks with... So I can look at my monster cards now. So zombie, zombie, zombie. Attacks with two, defends with three. Yeah. Okay, so the zombie is going to attack the elf with two. Not very strong. One skull. Now the elf still has the shellac and mortar in effect. 
I know it hasn't come up yet because she hasn't been attacked by an actual like monster attack. So she has also the helmet, so it's actually four defense. So four defense, you gotta block one skull. Come on. You can do it. It's totally random. Yeah, easily blocked it. Ka ching. Okay, now um let's see. That goblin really can't do anything. These shadows can move forward. One, 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 and then zoom out again. One, one, one. This kind of reminds me, there's a quest in Return of the Witch Lord where it just seems like there's corridors that are just filled with monsters, and it's like, you can stand there and fight them, or you can run away. It's like, okay, I'm getting sick and tired of doing this. Now, if you were in Space Crusade, you could fire your plasma gun, and it would blast down the hallway, you know, through one monster right after the other. Or I suppose if you had lightning bolt, you could blast them. But otherwise, you're just going to have to fight each one in turn. They're just all queued up waiting for their turn to fight you, as if it's like a martial arts movie. It's like, everybody wait your turn. It's like, can't we just mob the hero? Couldn't we, like, easily beat him? It's like, no, 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 no. Wouldn't be honorable to do that. Or you just reason, you know, he's just moving so fast and he's so scary that nobody wants to try anything actually strategic that might work. All right. Stay on target. Stay focused. Okay. So now what we're going to do is... Did that orc attack the barbarian already? No, we just did those two. Okay, so now we're moving to the orc in the hallway. That female orc there, she just looks like a kind of a dark shadow, but because they didn't make him a bright green, they made him a, a darker green. So the orc is going to attack the barbarian there. I guess I could adjust the light a little bit. Oh, that's, that's better. So Orc is attacking the Barbarian. Two skulls. Now he's only got three defense. So he could be taking a hit here. No defense. So he loses two. So he's down to five. Barbarian is down to five. Now that orc could move out of the way. Aha. So technically, those sh one of those shadows could have moved up. You know, I think that is worthwhile. So one, two, three, four. And let's see. Did that shadow have enough movement? One of them has got to have enough movement because I think they only moved one each. Two, three, and reveal. Oh, it's a bookcase. It's a piece of furniture. And so instead of a giant bookcase appearing out of nowhere, it just explodes. Because that's what I said. If a furniture appears in a corridor, it's just gone. But this one could move. So move one, two, three, four. And what is it? It is a chaos mutant. So we'll just shoehorn uh, one of those mutants in the room, or in the corridor, rather. And so that can attack the barbarian. And I believe it's a two attack. Yes, it is. It's none of them attack with one. Missed. All right. So that moved one, two, three, two three because they they would have had more movement left two three two three two three two three yeah so they all just the queue just moves along and we've got all these to move phew okay so open the door
So this um, out of the blue came a kill crazy crew. His motto was stomp on the weak. Bones in their hair, they were hungry as bears. And their leader was king of the freaks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. I guess we could do that. One, two, three, four, two. <laughs> one, two. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four. Yeah. You can just imagine a video game, you know, they're just, they're just crumpling up in there, or they just instantly warp to where they need to go. All right. I think that's all we can do for the chaos side of things. All right, Barbarian. He's got the Berserker brew. He's in a Berserker rage, Berserker kind of mood. So let's see what his movement is. 11. Oh, you didn't see that. It's 11. All right, so he's going to decide who he's going to attack. The mutant is weaker, but I think the other monsters are covered. So he's going to go ahead and go first for the mutant. Attack it with uh, his battle axe. So that's four. It's going to defend with two. Three skulls. Wait a minute, that was a battle axe. It should have been one more. I'm not sure why I do that. So three skulls, yeah, still three skulls. Yeah, it only defends with two, so there's no point. It's destroyed. So he kills the mutant and collects 10. A bounty of 10 gold. Let's add that to his character sheet here. He has by far the most bounties taken and now he can still see a monster because he can still see the the goblin but i think he's going to use some of his movement and it moved down the line so there's nowhere they can run one so there he's going to stay within sight at all times now we've got the alchemist Now, depending on what comes down the pipe, you may want to start using your skills. But he's got three. One. And we could do a uh, poke with the staff at the goblin. Now, it's only one, one combat die, but we'll see what we get. One skull. Goblin defends with one. No defense. Goblin is destroyed. So that's five gold for the alchemist. I know it's like, why not just make your own gold? Well, it's, it's expensive. I think that was his, yeah, that was his first bounty taken. So good for him. He's joining in on the action. Okay. Now we've got the elf. The Elven Apothecary going to do six. She has not taken any damage yet, so she's still got her armor bonus. Um, let's see. Let's just go ahead and attack that. Oops. Mess with the lighting. Sorry, you're seeing my jury rigged mess there okay so we're gonna attack the uh zombie with the long sword missed shucky darn i 
I was thinking, you know, the alchemist could use flask of fog and pass by those monsters, but he would be putting himself into a very dangerous situation, potentially, depending on what monsters are revealed to be. So because she missed, should she move? Maybe to protect the alchemist, yeah. So one, two, into the doorway. Now the dwarf, he's pretty beat up. So he might want to run out of there. But I was thinking if one of them dies, at least there's another hero there to claim their stuff. Because if they die in a room with monsters by themselves, all their stuff gets claimed by monsters and you can't get it back. It's just lost. 11. And let's see, he could shoot the zombie. Or it could attack the orc with the broadsword. Huh. Let's see, which is worth more? Zombies worth 20. I think orc is 20 as well, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's just uh, let's attack the orc. Well, let's shoot the let's shoot the zombie with the crossbow because just because it's cooler. Missed. Completely missed. Darn. Okay, well, so much for that idea. He could get himself out of the way. It's not going to matter that much, though. Let's get him out of that corner. Oh, he could escape completely. Oh, and I forgot. This uh, This should be revealed. So let's flip this tile over. Oh, potion. What's this on the other side? Scroll, or alchemist item in this case. Interesting. Okay. So that's, uh, that's a relief. So he missed with his attack. He could just get out of dodge. Of course, if he did that, he would be blocking. He would be blocking the barbarian. And then his berserker rage would go away. So I guess he shouldn't go this way. Instead, yeah, he's just going to stay put. There isn't much point. Maybe the elf should have healed him. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, because does he ha He doesn't have any potions at all. All right. Bad guy's turn. Draw a Zargon card. Ruthless attack. Yeah, that's not really going to apply. So we'll just leave that aside. But now we can move our monsters here. So the orc could run forward, but I'm curious what these other ones are. So I'm going to say, let's let's move this one forward. One, two, three. And it's a chaos warrior or a dread warrior if you prefer, but I call them chaos warriors. It's like, all right, so we're going to go ahead and attack the Barbarian with four. Four combat dice. Two skulls. Hmm. Two skulls. And he's got five left. Yeah, he can he can handle it. Oh, I rolled the wrong kind of dice. I was supposed to roll the bad guy dice. Well, it's still it doesn't matter. It's still two skulls. So we'll just uh, use the bad guy dice just to show that there's two skull hits. And then he's gonna roll defense. He's gonna roll with three. So I must be getting a little tired. Uh, no defense. Wow. Okay, so that's two hits. Well, maybe I should have used my defensive stuff there. So it's down to three. Because he does have his Potion of Frost skin. I'm going to have to see what that actually does. Potion of Frost skin. See, potions you can use any time. It's not like a an action it doesn't cost an action 
I mean, unless unless the card tells you that it has to be used on your turn, you can use it any time. Potion of Frost Skin. Only a, the Barbarian is affected. He can roll two extra combat dice when defending against attacks. As soon as there are no monsters in the line of sight, it wears off. So actually, he probably should just go ahead and use that. I mean, it's too late now because the action's already happened. But yeah, we're going to use Frost Skin. So as soon as he can no longer see monsters, it's going to go away. So it's just, just like Courage. So we're going to say that's active. So from now on, he defends with five. Okay. So the Chaos Warrior attacked him, did damage. And now can the shadows overlap those potions and um, alchemist items? I think yes. Because they're just, they're little, they don't take up much room. One, two, three, flip it over, and it's a mutant. So we're going to put a Chaos Mutant there. Starting to get crowded here again. One, two, three. We don't know what that is. One, two, three. One. And that orc really can't get in the way. And these others are going to move one, two, three. One, two, three. Shadows move one, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'll fill up every available square. One, two, three, four, five. Because why not? One, two, three, and it can't really go any further. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's how it's going to be. Should angle this one so you can actually see a little better. All right, that's that's the extent of that camera's uh, boom or arm, whatever you want to call it. So you can kind of see what's going on with this one. So we've cleared out that area. So it's like that. It's like a Batman villain's lair. I know. Brighten it up a little bit. Okay. So we moved all the bad guys there. But we've still got these guys here. So we can't forget about them. So the zombie is going to move forward one, two into the corner to attack the elf. And yes, expose himself to the alchemist's attack, I suppose. And so he's going to attack the elf with two. One skull. Elf defends with, what did I say? Four. So we got to beat one skull here. Ching. Blocked it. Orc is going to go ahead once again and attack the dwarf with three. Dwarf is still defending with five, having both the plate and the helmet. Two skulls. So he's got to be two skulls here. Or she could be in trouble. Not dead yet. Oh man, too bad that wasn't an attack. So two skulls. So he only blocked one of them and he took one damage. So he is, so white is down now down to three. Now he does have hidden reserves, so if he dies, he can actually bring himself, uh, he can revive himself with two. 
shrugging off wounds that would have killed lesser men. Or dwarves. Is a dwarf a man? I think he is. No matter his stature. Okay. Now, after those two monsters, boom, boom. Orc really... I mean, the orc could move out of the way to give those other monsters a chance. Down there. So let's see. One, two, three, four, three, four. Into the room. So let's put that put that orc into the room there. Let's zoom out so you can actually see. Okay, so I just move the orc there and then one, two, and just move everybody up. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. 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 <laughs> Just uh, making little patterns there, little designs. Everybody's waiting for their chance to attack. Okay, hero's turn. So the barbarian has his frost skin active, so I just got to remember that he's got that. All these bonuses. Let's see what he's moving. I mean, he's not going to be able to move out of there for a while. First thing he should do. Well, actually, he could take the opposite side of the alchemist. You know what? He's going to just attack the. He's going to attack the chaos warrior with four. Or the Dread Warrior for plus two more because he's got the Berserker Brew Rage going. So he attacks with six against that big Chaos Warrior monster. Six combat dice. Wow, and he only got one skull. Well, the Chaos Warrior defends with four, so he's only got to beat one. Now he's got three body points. And he got two black shields, so he defended. Yeah, and he really shouldn't move. So the alchemist is next. Now the alchemist finally can show his quality. So what has he got combat-wise? I think he's going to use his Greek fire. He's going to use it on the chaos warrior there. So we'll flip that over. So that means two hits of damage. The chaos warrior has to roll... Two red dice. For every five or six rolled, the damage is reduced by one point. Otherwise, he takes two damage. So this is the Chaos Warrior now. He didn't roll any fives or sixes, so he took two damage. Boom, boom. So two skulls. I'm just going to put them next to him just to show you that he got hit because it's just a nightmare I'm trying to put it all in there, put it all together. Yeah, that gray shape right there, that's a Chaos Warrior. Or Dread Warrior, one of these. All right. Well, that was a pretty cool attack. Oh, you know, I when he was attacked, did I, I forgot to do, defend against the Frost Skin. Or using the Frost Skin, that would have been two more. Yeah. Uh, let's see what it would have been. Did I remember to do it? Oh, man. Forgetting. Okay, so he would have defended. I'm just going to say he gets one back just because I forgot. I know. I shouldn't I shouldn't be forgetting like that. Okay, so let's say the Barbarian has four left. Because that, that potion keeps going. The effect keeps going until he can't see monsters. It's not like a use it once and then it's it's used up or defend once. No, it just keeps on going as long as you can see monsters. It's a really good potion. Okay, really helpful in combat situations like this where you're just boxed in. Okay, so the Chaos Warrior did his thing. Or no, the, the Barbarian. Okay, the, yeah. Yeah, the Barbarian went. I was just backtracking what I forgot to do the last, last turn. Alchemist did his thing. 
used up his Greek fire. Now the alchemist could move out of the way and allow the elf to move forward and try to do some damage. But the elf has got her own problems. So I think what the elf is going to do is just attack that zombie once again. Actually, you know what? Well, nah. Yeah. Okay, so the elf is going to attack that zombie with the long sword once again. Try to finally take it down. Three skulls. Well, isn't that special? Three skulls. It defends with three, so could get a good roll. We'll see. Nope, no defense. So it's sent packing. All right, so that's 20 gold for the elf. Finally, another bounty is collected. So Dream Girl gets 20. Now she could move, but she's protecting the alchemist. So she got six. She's going to just stay, stay put for now, for the moment. Now the dwarf. He's going to attack the orc with four using his battle axe. Three skulls. The orc only defends with two, so there's no way he can shrug that off. I don't have any special cards to protect him, so that orc. That's 20 gold bounty for the dwarf. With the amount of stuff that you have to keep track of, it's almost like a war game. I mean, you've got these two, well, not really an army of four really overpowered characters versus a huge army of, um, shall we say, less powerful characters. Let me just check the chat here. So we've been going strong for two hours and 48 minutes, just about. But to be fair, I spent a lot of time getting set up when we first started, so... It wasn't all solid wall-to-wall -wall action, but now we've got more action than we can cut with a broadsword or a longsword. Okay, so the dwarf wiped out the orc. He could move, but where is he going to go? Eight. Is he going to get out of that room? There's really no need. Who's going to get that alchemist item? Good question. You know what? I think he's just going to stay there. All right. Chaos turn. Moving right along. Got to gotta keep moving. Got to keep moving. Mimic. Play this card immediately after a hero has searched for treasure in a room with any furniture. Well, we haven't had any furniture rooms, so unfortunately that's wasted. S sorry, Shadzar. Inside joke there. Not so inside. All right. Um, I like the Mimic card. It's fun. But yeah, we just haven't revealed any furniture. There's just that one in the corridor. Maybe I should make dupes of the furniture. Of course, then you could get into some weird situations where you'd have more furniture than you knew you needed. Uh, let's see. Monster time. So first, the Chaos Warrior is going to attack the Barbarian. And he's going to attack with four, of course. But i got to remember that the Barbarian defends with two more. So he defends with five. Okay, one skull. Barbarian defends with five, because that Potion of Frost skin is still in effect. Anti-freeze. Uh, yeah, he got two white shields, so it blocked it easily. Now, I could move the Chaos Warrior out of the way so the other monsters could fight. <laughs> sure, why not? Even though he's super powerful, he might as well stand his ground, but here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six. So he's going to go into the room. I mean, technically, he is damaged. He's only down to one body point. So he might as well keep himself alive. 
let some of these other fresh uh, whippersnapper monsters do the job. So he just went into that room there. So I can move uh, one of these shadows forward, see what it is. It's a Chaos Sasquatch. So there we go once again. Just put him, drop him in. Here's where I wish the squares were just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger. Of course, then my table would be even more cramped than it is. Got to get a bigger table, more lights, more cameras. Action. Okay. So that's pretty good reveal. So that monster is going to attack the barbarian. And let's see, they attack with three. Of course, he's going to defend with five. Sasquatch attacking Griff, one skull. Griff, the barbarian, defends with five. Hua! <laughs> Look at that. Look at that roll. That's an absolutely perfect defensive roll. All white shields. So if that had been a polar war, war bear, watch out. Okay, so he defended everything. And these other monsters really aren't able to do anything, but actually I could bunch them up over here. So let's move some of them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, yeah, I guess just one. One, 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 one. They're just queuing up again. Okay, that sounds like fireworks or gunfire. Hopefully it's fireworks. Depending on where you live in the country, that means something to you. Okay. Sounds far away. All right. Um, I guess if we hear sirens in a few minutes, then we'll know that something was afoot. All right. Well, hopefully wherever you are, things are good. Hit him with this spread. <laughs> Sorry, Striker. I didn't see that. Uh, thank you. Strike 79 spread. Yeah, it's Contra. I'll have to talk about it in another stream. I, I originally was thinking about using all custom heroes with custom abilities in this uh, this session, but I thought, you know what, I've got enough on my plate to worry about just doing it this way, and maybe I'll wait until I really have it, you know, in my head before I sprinkle in even more stuff. But yeah, I have all kinds of cool ideas for future streams. It just it really is fun. I mean, ideally, I'd be playing with uh, four other people playing hero quest live that would be my dream to do it but right now it's, it's a little hard to do that so this is what we're doing instead we nature finds a way okay so after the monsters spread out it's going to be the heroes again okay barbarian why bother rolling to move he's just going to go ahead and attack with six and he's going to decimate and destroy the enemy. So he's attacking the Sasquatch. Gee, could he have gotten any more skulls? Well, five skulls. And it defends with four, so it's still got something of a chance. Five skulls. Okay, and only blocked one, so four skulls, it's destroyed. Taking the mutant with him. Okay, so that's 50 gold bounty collected by the barbarian. This character sheet's starting to run out of room here. 50. He's just that good. I mean, he has to wear two belts because he has so many notches in it. Actually, that's not very... Uh, notches in the sword, maybe. Uh, okay. He could move forward. Should he? Okay, he got five. Just anything 
and he would have been able to do it. So one. Now the alchemist. Question is, do I want it? Well, nobody else can really get in there. Everybody's kind of out of the way. I'm going to move the alchemist into the room and snag that scroll or that alchemist item for. I feel like this alchemist is just an opportunist. One, two, three, four. Searching for treasure, and we're going to reveal finally what that alchemist item was. So let me just shuffle these one more time. All right. Let's see what it what it was that the alchemist found. Now anybody could search for these, but he heard alchemist and he was like excited. So Exodius Majesticus. Okay, Greek fire once again. I just had a lot of fun uh, thinking of creative ways to do that. So Greek fire added to his arsenal. So since he already used up his regular ability, him having another one is pretty handy and that of course can carry on to the next quest all right let me just grab another throat loss and cheer okay after the oh yeah and we'll just remove the tile because it's been used up it's been found see normally it'd be a spell scroll but we're using demagicified tonight so it's a Alchemist item. Okay. Elf. Elf can't really move. I mean, she can move boxcars, but can't really go anywhere. One. Yeah, actually, she's in a good spot because she could use heal body on him if he needed it. Now, the dwarf. Just kind of like doesn't have much to do now. We need the Elven Cloak of Passage or something. So eight. One, two, three, uh, four. Okay, so he just moved back there. Okay, so there, that's where we stand right there. Let's just look back at the chat. I need to check the chat more re more. <laughs> more often so I don't miss uh, cool stuff that you guys are saying. Okay, so we've got a lot of monsters queued up here, a lot of them. This is what can happen. This is like little kid making a quest, putting in too many monsters. Oops, that was our warning. We've got an hour to go in our little block. I mean, you know, just, I try to set that time aside, you know, six to 10. Uh, central time to do the stream obviously this is taking a lot longer than i thought it would but i i you know i set this goal for myself uh to have the 48 tiles so it is what it is you know as far as time time concerns but now we see that it, it can take a lot longer to play this way now if you're playing with five people it would be quicker or four people in this case but yeah, there's some, there's just a few things that seem a little odd if it's if it's not Zargon actually doing it. So probably the heroes would take turns doing Zargon's turn, so to speak. Okay. All right. First, we're gonna get an, an attack from that mutant. That chaos mutant is gonna attack Griff the Barbarian. Just gotta use the correct dice here, the proper dice. It's attacking with two. Two skulls. Moving right along. So he defends with five because he's got frost skin. Got to beat two skulls. Oh, he beat one. And he gets takes one damage. So he's down to three. Now he could use, uh, let's see. Oh, no. Parry and repost has been used up. Hmm. Yeah, he has. Someone would need to heal him. Yeah, that's probably what we should do. Okay. So, Alchemist. Eight. 
eight. Could just march right in there and heal him. One, two, three, four, five. Because I, I mean, we're basically putting all of our all of our hopes and dreams into the barbarian anyway. He's just leading the charge. Everybody's buffing him out. He's already pretty buff. I mean, let's let's face it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and use. Let's see. Where is that card? Healing tonic on the barbarian, and so he's gonna get four back. So he's up to seven now. Not quite full, but doing pretty well. He's feeling good. Now the elf... See, now here's where um, shellac and mortar would have been nice to use on a fellow. But, you know... See, I, I've, got, I've got medicinal herbs. She could heal him if he needs it again. And the dwarf can't pass his combat card. He's hidden reserves to the barbarian. Of course, the thing is, the barbarian could move out of the way. But the problem is, then his berserker rage would wear off. So it's like, ah, oh, I got to keep the bonus. The only way he's going to move out of the way is if he's in danger of, like, actually dying. Like, for real. So I guess strategically, we're just going to kind of keep him in the loop. All right, so... Uh, the mutant, um, wait a minute. Yeah, I moved the alchemist, healed him, da 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 da, nobody does anything. Okay, so the we're back to the monsters. So I really should have moved that monster out of the way. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so the, hope I didn't skip somebody's turn. If I did, I'm sorry, it's, it's getting late. All right, well, it just loops back, and so we've got the um, the mutant is attacking the barbarian with two. One skull, he defends with five. Sometimes I get on a roll, you know. Haha. <laughs> One skull, and he blocks everything. Okay, so now the, what the mutant is going to do is move out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, way back here. to the corner and now this one is revealed what's the shadow gonna be it's a fire burst uh oh and do we see what's behind it well it's gonna go off six squares one two three four five six so it's gonna hit <laughs> oh man now they're gonna have to move out of the way because they could use lose up to three I'm sorry about that see I snoozed it I didn't shut it off so yeah, just a little alarm to remind us of our time here. Moving right along, moving right along. So I said, be, I previously established that anything behind the fireburst is hidden. But if it hits and kills, we're going to have to see what it, what it hits and kills. So it's going to go off on the chaos turn. Wow. Okay. Well, it's going to go off on this turn. So <laughs> they have an opportunity to get out of the way is what I said. So let's say, let's see what it is. Ah, uh, potion. Well, the potion isn't going to get blown up. That would be an interesting idea. Like, the treasure gets blown up. But it doesn't. Uh, w weapons rack. Okay, well, that's furniture. That just blows up. That disappears. And uh, it, I guess it would technically go in this direction, too. So it would hit that diagonal square. So what is this going to be? Because this can't be seen by the heroes, but it could be blown up. It's an orc. So that orc is in danger. And if, as soon as the orc moves, those other ones are going to have to... Well, the other ones are out of danger. Because it's just six squares in every direction. But it stops at the wall. Stops at a closed door. Okay, so reveal the fire burst. So actually that was really cool because now that fire burst is going to hit them. So do I want to bother to move monsters in the way? Probably not. Because they're going to get hit. One, two... Uh, sure, let's just let let the fire burst hit. So uh, the barbarian is going to get attacked with three combat dice. No defense. Well, 
one skull, so he loses one. So he's down to six. Alchemist is going to get hit by three. Oh man, three skulls. He's not dead. And he used up his healing, so uh oh. So he's down to one. Let's see. Yeah, he doesn't have any other healing abilities. But the alpha's right there to heal him. Okay, so that thing went off. Oh, and we gotta say it, it hits the orc too. Because the orc didn't move out of the way. So I guess I should establish when does the fire burst actually go off? Does it go off at the beginning of the turn? Does it go off after all the monsters have moved? Or, you know, if they wanted to or what? So this could be the end of the orc. And no one's going to get the gold if he's killed. Two skulls, yeah. That orc is destroyed and nobody gets the bounty. Boom. Okay, so the fire burst is gone. I guess that's uh, self-serving strategic, but yeah, anyway. So now everybody can move in and be fine. So let's move one and reveal what it is. It's a mutant. So the mutant has movement left. Two, three, four, five. Let's just move these others. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Five. I'm just sitting on top of the potion. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. Four, five. Yeah, so they're all queuing up again. Everybody wants a crack at the at the heroes. Now here's where somebody is going to say, hey, well, you should just get one of those custom boards that has double wide, like all the quarters are double wide. But then you're going to need a bigger table, need a bigger boat for real. OK, so mutant is going to attack the barbarian. You thought maybe I was going to forget, did you? But no, didn't you? OK, one skull. He defends with five. Now, technically, was there a moment there where there were no monsters he could see? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that whole time he could still see monsters. They didn't clear out completely. Did they? Or did they? I'm going to say, I'm going to make the call and say they didn't. Okay, so... Yeah, he blocked everything. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I could move this guy here. Or, yeah, I could move these guys. Well, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, they're just going to stay where they're at. Okay, back to the heroes. Starting to lose the plot here. Okay, the barbarian attacks with... Let's see, what is he attacking with? Four plus two, six. Because he's got the Battle Axe and the Berserker Fury, Berserker Brew. Berserker Brew, which pr produces a Berserker Fury. Attacking the Mutant. Oh, wow. I couldn't have ro ro rolled that more perfectly. Well, missed one, but five skulls. Read them and weep. So he killed that monster, collected ten gold. Tin bounty, rather. And we get to reveal some more shadows. So that is another one. Another mutant. Okay. So he might as well inch forward. Because really, he's, I mean, he's got six body points. He's doing pretty well. He's feeling good. Eight. Make it a little easier to see.
Okay. So he got eight, so he could just walk forward. Yeah, those uh, those Zargon cards can hit you in all kinds of ways that you didn't think was possible. Do all kinds of nasty things to you. So now the alchemist You know what? Um ah, what's he going to do? I think he's going to move forward. Someone's going to have to pick up the slack. 7 bring up the rear. Okay, 1. And he is going to pass the holy water because he does have one. He's going to pass the Holy Water to the Barbarian. And yes, he had that from last time. Okay. So the bar Barbarian has that. And now the Elf is going to use Medicinal Herbs on the Alchemist. So that gets used. So yeah, now the elf has used all three of her uh, alchemy skills. Now the shellac and mortar remains in effect, of course. So the alchemist is healed back to maximum of four. Okay. Should the elf move? Not much point. I mean, as long as somebody's in the corridor with the barbarian to ca catch his stuff in case he gets killed. Let's move the move the dwarf closer. One. All right, monster's turn. Bad guy's turn. Chaos turn. Zargon's turn. Draw the card. Monster swap. So, mysteriously, two monsters switch places. Well, I mean, the Chaos Warrior spent a lot of time running away, but really, we need the, we need his firepower. So, I think he and the Mutant are going to switch places. So, we're going to take the Mutant over here. Put the Chaos Warrior there. And keeping in mind, the Chaos Warrior is down to one body point. The holy water is going to be used to smash that mutant anyway, so now I can't use it. I mean, it, does it work on a Chaos Warrior or not? You decide. I'm deciding in this game, no. It would only work on the figures that are this color, this uh, off-white, yellowish color. Okay. So they switch places, and now, naturally, the Chaos Warrior is going to, going to attack. I guess I could have had that monster attack first and then do the swap, but I didn't know the swap was coming. Okay, two skulls. Now the barbarian defends with five. Haven't heard any sirens, so I'm guessing those were just uh, fireworks. Okay, so two skulls and plenty of defense. Plenty of defense. Cha ching. All right. Now, since uh, the uh, Zargon card allowed him to move, he can actually just move out of the way so somebody else can take a swing. Now, if none of these are monsters, he's going to lose his uh, Berserker Fury. Three. Well, let's say four. Move to the side there, and so this one is revealed. Vermin! It's another rat. And so the uh, the alchemist uh, captured that one and domesticated it. I mean, is, is it a pet, or is he going to use it for animal experimentation? Sorry, PETA. Slash not sorry. Okay, we're not talking politics on this channel. All right, flip it over. Um, goblin. Okay, so there's a goblin there. And we're not revealing the last one. Okay, so barbarian. All 
Yeah, because we didn't do anything else. Yeah, we pretty much, I mean, we could have moved every single monster, but I decided not to. So, okay, so Barbarian still has movement left. Five. Yeah, I can't search for anything yet because there's still monsters in the corridor. Two, three, all the way up to the goblin. Now, since he passed that one, we should be able to see what this shadow was. Oh, it's another mutant. So yes, uh, I there was a special on these from Reaper Mini Miniatures. Not a sponsored video. I just wanted to mention, I mean, everybody knows that's where I get my minis from. Either they're 3D printed or I found them on eBay or got them from Reaper. Whatever works best for you. Cheers, Dead Gamer. Okay. So after the Barbarian... But see, now I exposed the Alchemist here. So he does have some more firepower left. He's got Greek fire. Of course, now is he going to use it up on... Maybe he should just use his fire lance. Oh, and I didn't... Yeah, I didn't use the holy water. Um... Oh, he's got the Chinese rocket. I forgot about that. That's pretty powerful. I feel like he should use that on the Chaos Warrior. I mean, he'll either use the... Let's see. If he uses the Fire Lance, there's a two and six a one and three chance that it'll defend. Um, if it's... If he gets a skull, there's a... One in six, one in six. I mean, it's similar odds. Somebody else could crunch the numbers, but... Of course, he doesn't have to actually get in range. He could just use his... Uh, staff around the corner. He's still going to be exposed. Actually, no, because the other heroes can get in the way. Yeah, this will work. Okay. Seven. So the alchemist is going to step forward... Instead of, well, he could search, though. He could search, but then he there's, there's that monster. But if he kills it, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be in the way. Let's see what that potion is. But he can't search for it because, I mean, yeah, there's a screen. I mean, this monster is, block, is being blocked by the heroes, but we're going to say there's a monster in the corridor he can't search. So he's, he's got to attack. Okay, so he's going to attack the uh, mutant. Decisions, decisions. Okay, totally failed. Whiffed. Next, the elf. Now, the elf is down to, let's see, six. Well, yeah, she hasn't been hurt yet because that's why the shellac and mortar is still working. Six. One, two, three, four. She's going to attack. Well, that's exposing her, but yeah, might as well take care of it. Attacking the mutant with her longsword. She could have done the same thing the alchemist had done. Uh, one skull. He defends with two. No defense. Mutant is destroyed. Ten gold bounty for the elf. The Elven Apothecary. All right, now the Dwarf. Ah, the Dwarf can go into battle. Let's see. He was healed, so he's... Well, but he's down to three. Oh, but he can use his hidden reserves if he needs it. Yeah, it's, it's risky putting him in the way. It really is. But let's see. He's a hero after all, right? This is what heroes do. Five. Even when they're afraid, they do what's right, and they put themselves in harm's way for others. Five. One, two, three, four, eh, five. He wouldn't quite make it anyway. One, two, three. Well, he had the right intention. He, he was trying. Maybe next time. All right. Monsters.
Are we going to finish by 10 o'clock? We'll see. Okay, Rust. Uh, this is only when, uh, yeah, we're not using Chaos Alchemy abilities, skills this time, so that doesn't really do anything. So we're just going to attack with monsters instead. So first the goblin is going to attack. For all the good it's going to do, attack the barbarian with two. So she takes a swing, one skull. He defends with five, all of five. Yeah, easily blocked it. Ka-ching. She's going to move out of the way. So we'll move the goblin out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, all the way over here. Now we're going to reveal this one. Uh-oh, treasure chest. Boom, gone. Can he see any monsters? No, he can't. So I'm going to say his Berserker Brew wears off because... Well, wait, 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 wait. Nope, wrong, wrong, wrong. Because he can see a diagonally. One, two. He can see this orc. So it's still it's still in effect. It's still in effect. So he, he uh, he's doing okay. But knowing that, it's like okay, do I move them out of the way so it won't affect them? No, of course not, because that would be not a cool move. Okay, and of course they're going to move forward. One, reveal it. Oh, equipment. One, two. Oh no, why, why am I moving these? No, because, yeah, okay, well, you know, sorry. I, I was I was moving them forward. It's it's not the monster's turn yet, is it? Or yes, it is. Let's see, I'm all confused. Okay, so I revealed this. I attacked with the goblin. And I got all confused. And so that goblin, yeah, the goblin attacked and moved out of the way. So we revealed what was there. Okay, no, 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 that's correct. Okay, so that's equipment. But we don't move these other things yet. Unless we want to. Yeah, I moved it there. Okay, no, no I, I'm I'm all confused. Okay, so we're, we're still moving. I was thinking like we'd switch to the Barbarian's turn. I don't know why I thought that. Because I guess it's like Goblin gone, he's killed, wrong. All right, let me just move that out of the way so you can see better. Okay, one, two. Reveal that. Oh, it's double equipment. One, two, three. Ah, a Fimmer, or in this case, one of these guys, an Abomination. It's three, one, two, three, four. We're going to move him forward and attack the Barbarian, because of course we will. And we'll move this other one just right behind him. Yeah, it's just a leaning tower of tiles. Now, the Abomination is just like a Fimmer in terms of stats. So, I mean, he's got two two body points. And let's see. I believe he attacks with three. Yeah, attacks with three, defends with three, and so on. The remake doesn't change anything. It's just visually different. So he's going to attack the Barbarian with three. Yeah, I need to I need to get a meal and go to bed. <laughs> but we're playing Hero Quest now. So until that happens. No Cheeto fingers in this game. Okay, one skull. And it, now he can still see monsters, so his frost skin hasn't worn off, his berserker brew hasn't been worn off. Despite my thought that maybe it had, because he could still see the monster in the corner. Um yeah, he blacked it. Ching. Okay, well, I guess that's going to be it for that, but I can move the monsters and flank on this side and attack the elf. So probably should move the Chaos Warrior. One, two, despite the fact that he's weakened. And we'll move the other monsters in behind him. So one, two, goes the mutant. All right. Yeah, we need the spread gun. <laughs> really do. Okay, so the uh, Chaos Warrior attacking the elf. 
Now the elf just still defends with four. Chaos Warrior attacks with four. Uh, one skull. She defends with four. Cha-ching-ching. -ching. Ching ching. Yeah, it's like can I act four? Okay, we were talking about that the other time. Other other uh, fun board games. I was thinking, you know, uh, card games aren't really board games. You're not playing them on a board. You're playing them on a tabletop, right? And the same thing with uh, marbles and jacks. You're playing them on the ground or on a table. Tiddlywinks. Uh, tabletop games, board games. I mean, this is a board right here. This is a board. So yeah, I guess tabletop gaming would be. Uh, playing it on the ground gaming i mean because craps you know you roll dice on that ground rather than on a table yeah anyway games just because there's dice and cards involved doesn't mean that it's uh, a board game necessarily but i mean this is not hero quest is not considered a card game even though it's got cards so it's a board game it's a tabletop game okay so i did that and now I'm not going to do anything else because that goblin has used up her movement. So we're going to go to the heroes now. The barbarian once again has his choice. Well, actually he doesn't. He's only got one monster in front of him and that's the abomination. In classic hero quest, it would be the femur. Two skulls. Wait a minute. Why did I only roll four? He's supposed to attack with six. Let's roll two more. Whoops. Two more skulls. Let's see if there's two more skulls. Nope. Still two skulls. Okay. So it would have turned out the same, but yeah. Two skulls and the femur defends with three. Stronger than an orc. Blocked one and was hit by the other one. So he takes one damage. So he's like half, half destroyed. Okay, so I'm running out of skull tiles. There's more, but I just didn't grab them out of the box. I didn't think I'd need so many. Okay, so we're going to say skull right there, representing the fact that he's half damage. Yeah, because unlike the European version, you do have multi-body point monsters, and it causes no end of headache for the GM. Just kidding. Not that bad. Not that bad. But now I'm kind of thinking I should have made all my tiles exact same size and thickness. So I wouldn't have a problem. But I guess I made them small because I thought, well, I might use them on a smaller board. But I mean, recording, I'm always either using this board or the remake board. I mean, I like this because it's got a matte finish. All right. So he did that attack, and there's not much else he can do. The alchemist can see... Let me zoom in here. He can see the Chaos Warrior, the Dread Warrior. Almost said the Dreadnought. <laughs> Dread not. It's Chaos. He can use uh, Greek Fire on him. He can go ahead and use that extra Greek Fire that he had. So he's going to use that on the Chaos Warrior. And so that means two body points of damage unless he can roll a five or a six. Two dice. Oh, look at that. He rolled a five and a six, so no damage. So that gets used up. That alchemist item didn't help. He tried, though. Okay, well, too bad the dwarf doesn't have a diagonal weapon. Because I said the crossbow is not going to work that way. Well, the alchemist is in a good spot, so I think... Um, Yeah, uh, the elf. It's the elf's turns anyway. So she's got. She doesn't have any potions. Well, she has one. It's a potion of magic resistance, which in the demagicified world is called Mithril potion. Makes your skin like metal. But it just defends against chaos alchemy, and nobody's using any of those skills yet, so it doesn't really help her in combat like this. So she's just going to use the long sword on the chaos warrior. One skull. He defends with four. See, they gave the they gave him these big shields this time, so 
mace and a shield instead of a just an axe. One skull. Yeah, easily defended. Two black shields. Shrugged it off like nothing. Now does the elf try to move out of the way? I mean, she's pretty strong. She's got lots of body points. So I think that's it for the heroes. All right. Time for Zargon to take a swing. So we've got half an hour tripped. Randomly pick one hero. That hero must discard one potion card at random. You trip over a loose tile and break one of your potions. Uh-oh. Now, for purposes of this, do we consider holy water to be a potion? I think I, in the past I've done that. So let's see. To make it fair, we're going to roll one of these weird pyramid uh, dice. And we're going to do it just like before. So Barbarian is 1, Alchemist is 2, Elf is 3, Dwarf is 4. Whoever it is loses their potion. Now, if they don't have any potions, then I guess they tripped, but you know, didn't break anything. All right, what did we get? 4. That's a 4. See that? The one on top. So that's the dwarf. He doesn't have any potions, so they lucked out. Now the thing is, uh, Zargon normally would say, okay, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And you just make a decision. But it says um, discard one potion card at random. Okay, so if you had a bunch, bunch of cards, I mean, they're just written on the sheet. You just kind of like, you know, hold them out and be like, that one. It's like, okay, which one did I lose? Or I guess Zargon could pick, you know, I want that one. So you just you just figure it out. I mean, it's their homebrew rules. You just kind of make it work. Whatever seems fair, because it's, it's something unique. I like them. So, okay. And yeah, you can get the, they call it the Evil Wizard deck. On uh, yieldin.com. In the custom cards section. I think you have to click the British flag first, and then you click cards. Yeah, and then it would show the stuff. Custom cards. Or you can just search for it on the forums. Same way. Okay, so monsters turn. Let's go with... Uh, yeah, let's go with the Fimmer. Or the Abomination. Attacking the Barbarian first. So with three. Late Night Hero Quest. Okay, two skulls. Barbarian still defends with... He's got the frost skin, so he's defense with five. Yeah, if I didn't load him up with potions and gold from last time, they'd be having a lot harder time. Oh, three white shields, so defended easily. Now that Fimmer can move out of the way. Yeah, I think he will. One, two... Of course, who knows what that monster would be. It might be something really weak. Let's flip it over. Flip over the shadow. And it, it's another one. It's another one. Just to show you I'm not crazy. Look. So, sheer coinky dink. That's how it came out of the bag. Okay, so we'll put another, another abomination. Right there. That one can move forward and attack. So that was pretty fortuitous for me anyway, as well, if I were Zargon. Okay, three skulls. Let's see if we can get three skulls. Or it might be anything else. Three attack dice, one skull only. And he defends with five. Whoops. Ah, sometimes this happens. I got a little too carried away, and I threw one of the dice on the floor. And see, when you're playing these games, I mean, the rule is if you drop it on the floor, you got to re-roll it. It's not like, you know, you got to climb under the climb under the couch to find the die when you're a kid. Shine the flashlight. It's like, hey, what, what, what can you see? What is it? It was a skull. No. It's like, no, just re-roll that sucker. Okay.
Here you can see a little bit better all that drama. Oh yeah, you weren't seeing the the angle of all that stuff. So yeah. Okay, so one one skull against the barbarian. He's defending with five. You have to roll a little harder when you got more dice in the cup. These big, these bigger dice. The wooden, the small wooden dice from the original set would be okay. Okay, so he defended it. Uh, he got two white shields. Cha Ching. Now we could move the goblin. Yeah, one two, just for for fun. Okay, so now the uh, chaos warrior is going to attack the elf again. Four. She's going to defend with four. Two skulls. Moving right along. Ooh, okay, so she blocked one and she got hit by one. So the elf has lost a body point. She's down to five, so that means her um, shellac and mortar is wears off. Because it, it lasts until you lose one body point, no matter how how it happened. So that's used up. So she doesn't have any more alchemy skills left. Except if she had picked up any items. But Oh yeah, she has a gossamer net. I forgot about that. She does have this. Could be used on her turn. She can actually give it to someone too. I keep forgetting that. You can hand... That'll be interesting. Okay, so the Chaos Warrior could move out of the way and allow the one of the other monsters to attack, but why? He's just serving as a shield for them. Yeah. You know, and I should have revealed, because they're, they're actually, the Barbarian is technically just barely into this last quadrant, and I just realized that just now. So probably two turns ago, he should have revealed the last of the tiles, the last of the shadow tiles. So let me reveal those now. So previously I revealed one room full. So that was three, six, nine, 12. So it should be nine more. Oh man. Okay. So here we go. We really are going to be here after 10. <laughs> Two. Unless it's all treasure or something like that. How cool would that be? They kill all the monsters and they've just got like piles of treasure to find. Just shake the bag up. I keep getting ones upside down. Yeah, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to you could get a corner of green. Okay, and then you know it's safe to pull it out of the bag. That's yeah, you can see what it is. I'm trying not to peek at them. Again, I should do like a little braille nub on one side so I can tell what side is what. I wasn't thinking about doing it like this. I was thinking about just, you know, putting them in a pile. It's a blank one. Yeah, blank is just nothing. Come on. They're all like the opposite side. Okay, finally. Okay. Three, six, nine, and there'll be three more. I can't remember which room it was exactly. Let's just say it's that one. That one there. One. Could be worse. It could be like 16. But yeah, the more monsters you got, the longer the longer the game goes. There's just no way around it. All right.
So those are going to be the last, the last monsters. So once they wipe these out, they've, uh, they've solved the quest. I mean, they can run. They can always run away. But will they really? Okay. So now I should move all of these. So let's just open the door. So one, two, one, one, two, one. I guess I can move one into that corner. One, two. And these will go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And see, the thing is, if you're playing like Space Crusade, you can't forget to do this. I mean, of course, there it's nice because the board is like, you know, it's obviously four boards. So you know that, boom, the minute you step in there, you got to bring them all out. It's not like, oh, I forgot to forgot to put them out. I guess they don't exist. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he can't really go. Okay. So the monsters, have the monsters done all they can? I think we're up to the heroes now. You can tell I'm getting tired. I'm losing the plot, but no, I forge ahead. Okay, so we're just going to make an executive decision and say that the heroes are going next. So the barbarian is going to attack the first uh, abomination there with six because we got to get this get these guys cleared out three skulls so the abomination only defends with three and he's got one left or no this is the one that's fresh so that skull should actually be applying to the the wounded one that's over here so that guy's fresh so we got three skulls no defense, so he wiped him out. So he killed the the abomination or the femur. So that's thirty bounty for the barbarian. If he gets out of this alive, he'll be a rich man. Well, until he visits the armory. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we get to reveal this. What is it? It's an alchemist item. So there's just a big pile of treasures there. <laughs> now, I guess the person that searches on that square is going to get all of that loot. They're going to get all that loot, rather than having to search every single time. Um, okay, and, and for finally, the, uh, the corridor is clear. Now, he can still see the Chaos Warrior. If the Chaos Warrior moves, he'll, he'll be able to see the orc. So, I guess... Now the alchemist, what does the alchemist have? He's got four health, four body points. He could use a paralyzing dart. Hmm, yeah. Or he could use a gossamer net. It's like he could do something to cause one of these other creatures to like lose their ability to attack that turn. Might as well do something. I guess he should use up his alchemist abilities first before he goes for the alchemist items, because the items could carry over into the next quest, assuming they make it that far. Oh, he's got the Chinese rocket. You know what? Let's just use that. Let's get rid of that uh, gas warrior while we're here. So we're going to use that. So that means five combat dice against the Chaos Warrior, because you can see him diagonally right there. Right there. Boom. All right, two skulls. Now he defends normally with four, so two skulls. This could be some gold for the Alchemist. Whoops, got to re-roll that one. Was it 
three or two? Well, it doesn't matter because he, he blocked one and he's only got one left, so he's dead. Boom. Destroyed. 100 gold bounty goes to the alchemist. Nice shot. All right. All right, we're getting into the late hour here. Thanks everybody for joining us on HeroQuest fans tonight because it's these games can go kind of long, especially if I'm overthinking it or just trying to stay awake. Okay. So after taking out, okay, yeah, the alchemist, should he move? Probably not. So after the alchemist, and the barbarian can still see a monster, so he's fine. The elf could move, but probably shouldn't right now. Well, yeah, because if the elf moves in the way, the berserker state is going to go away. And so is the frost skin, because he'll block the site. The, his site will be blocked. So the elf instead should probably, but I want the elf to do something. Maybe she should just move forward and attack the, because the abomination's out of range anyway of the barbarian. I want to get these monsters cleared out. Seven. Or she she could search. It's like why why would she have to be on the square to search? Now nah, I'm just going to just move combat forward. Oh, yeah, because I'm searching this corridor. Hmm. That scroll could be something really awesome, that alchemist item. Maybe instead of attacking. Okay, instead of attacking, she rolled a six. She's going to stay put. She's gonna, just going to draw another card. So let's see what these alchemist items. So just draw one because she's standing right on it. All right, it's the Chinese rocket. Sweet. Okay, so she gets that. Another awesome attack. So that was worth it. Because again, we we're just searching the vertical, not, not the uh, connecting corridor. So it's like, just because there's monsters and the other one doesn't mean it stops you from searching the first one. Okay, so that was the action used up. So after the elf comes the dwarf. The dwarf could move, but then he would be blocking the way. But, I mean, he could finally do something. He could attack. Let's see, what has he got? He's got three. Mm, he's got, yeah, he's got healing. All right, he's going to run forward. Eight. Now he could search and get all that loot. Yeah, that's 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 a great idea. One, two, three, four, five. So he's gonna get three different things. Now he's exposing himself to attack, but let's see. So he's gonna have to draw an alchemist item and two equipment cards. All right, great. Looking forward to this. So let's do the equipment cards first. So he gets one. Crossbow, he's already got one. Okay, well, whatever. He's got two now. And what's the second one going to be? He can sell it, or he can give it to another hero. Shield! Hey, hey! He doesn't have a battle axe or a staff or anything, so that increases his armor, which he's going to need. So now he's at six. Right? Because he's got his base defense, two. Helmet. Three, plate, five, shield, six. So he's going to equip that shield. He can't really toss the toss the uh, crossbow to anybody. Okay, now let's see what alchemist item he gets. Just get that deck out again. Hyrax cage. Ah, so he can dig through the wall. Might come in handy.
All right, just adding that to his character sheet. He's got that. And technically he has two crossbows. Now he can't fire them both at once, sorry. Not not under the base rules. It's like dual wielding, no dual wielding rules. Finishing up painting my elf, good to listen to since it's very on subject. Yeah, thanks Striker. Yeah. It, Thanks for sticking with us, and I hope it, your mini turns out well. Go ahead and share it with us um, when you do get it done. Either post in the forums or put it in Discord. I'd love to see it, see how it turned out. Okay, so who is next? Honestly, I'm just trying to keep it together here. It's just so much action. Okay. So the dwarf found all that loot, so that means he doesn't get to attack. And now it's the bad guy's turn. All right, here we go. Throwing a card. Charge! Double the monster's movement for this turn. The monster suddenly charges. Okay, before moving a monster. All right, so any monster gets double movement. You know what? It doesn't matter that much. I guess I could double the movement of one of these uh, shadows. Get them into the fight quicker. Yeah, might as well do that. So instead of just moving five, it's going to move ten. So down here... Uh, zoom out. All these un, all these used up tokens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And the others are gonna go one, two, three, four, five. They're slow. One, two, three, four, five. 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 The only time it would really help you is if it were a uh, a mummy or a Sasquatch. All right, should I move those guys? Can move them closer. There's really no point. Okay, so the abomination is going to attack the dwarf. That's the first thing. Attacks with three. One skull. Dwarf is going to now defend with six. Yeah, so that's that's pretty powerful. Now, six dice is not the maximum defense or attack you can roll in HeroQuest. Potions can stack, so actually it can get pretty high indeed. Of course, you might reason, well, if you use two of the same potion, does it really increase it? So maybe it just increases by two. All right. All right, so... Yeah, he got three, three white shields. He definitely defended. Okay. So I could move the the abomination out of the way so that one of these other figures can move. Yeah, why don't I do that? Just to see, just to get him revealed. And this was the wounded one too. One, two, three. So he's going in that corner there with his damage next to him to remind us. And now we're gonna. That one can be. Well, I can't really be seen. One, two, and reveal it. Oh, it's a zombie. All right, so let's put a zombie in there. And we'll just move this one here so it can be seen, and we'll flip it over. Equipment. Okay. So zombie attacks with two. Uh, missed. <laughs> Too slow. Too slow, dead man. Okay. Um... Let's see, an orc is stronger than a mutant. So I think the orc is going to move forward out of this room finally. One, two, and she's going to attack the only one that she can reach, which is the elf. Now the elf has lost her defensive buff, as they call it. So she's down to just three defense, just with the helmet. So the orc is going to attack the elf. Wow, three skulls. That's pretty powerful. Let's see, she's down to five. So she gets to defend with three. One, she blocks one, and she takes two damage. Down to three. She's used up her healing as well, so... Now she does have that Chinese rocket and the gossamer net, 
So could use those. All right. Any other monsters? Oh, actually, no, no. The, the goblin can't hop over the dwarf's head as much as she would like to. Yeah, let's just move this mutant forward. Just one square. Not that it matters that much, but just in front of the door. All right, I think that's all the monsters can do. So let's let's move on to the heroes. I mean, they're they're slowly making progress. They're wading their way through these just just piles and piles of monsters. It's easy, much easier to fight them inside rooms than it is in these corridors. But it's the same technique as it's you know the door blocking technique. You just hope the guy in front is <laughs> snake eyes too. Okay, well that was the barbarian. Um, he can't move because then monsters are going to be out of sight. Let's see, he doesn't have any diagonal attacks. He does have holy water, uh, but he can't really throw it at anybody. There's no quote unquote undead. Just call them chaos, chaos mutant type creatures, chaos creatures in the way. So yeah, I guess uh, I just he's, he's just going to stay put. Now, the alchemist could waste a really powerful attack on that orc, which would be a shame. Hmm. Well, I do have a fire lance. Yeah, I'm just going to, might as well use it. It's a way to attack. And we mean, is it any stronger than the, uh, the staff? I mean, yes, because the orc defends with two. So I think it's a little stronger than attacking with the staff. So we can use the fire lance on that orc there. So that is used up. And now the orc has to roll a five or six to avoid getting incinerated. Failed. So the orc is blasted with flames. So if anybody has seen the original version of, uh, I almost said Princess Mononoke, which is a much better film, but uh, Mulan, D Disney's Mulan, the original uh, cartoon version, they had the rocket launchers. I think those are supposed to be fire lances, or one version of a fire lance, I guess, like a primitive firearm. It's like a rocket launcher, but you could see it as like, you know, it's like a, almost like a musket, but it's like it's like a firework on a stick that's enough to take out an enemy soldier at close range all right certainly to scare the heck out of troops okay so blew that one up and so that's 20 gold bounty for the alchemist see so he's getting a healthy number of uh number of bounties this uh this quest is he gonna move i don't think so So now it's the elf's turn. Should be nice if the elf had a ranged weapon. She does have the Chinese rocket. She's got the gossamer net. Mm. It's like I want to use it, but I also don't want to use it because using it up means I can't use it on the next quest. As you know, it's the opportunity cost. You use it and you don't get to use it. Uh, something you could have you could have used it in the, the next quest. Hmm. Yeah, and the dwarf can't give his gear to anybody else because he's far, far away from anybody. Got to be adjacent. Now, if the elf steps forward, she's going to block the barbarian. So, yeah, I've already been over that. So she's just not going to do anything. She's going to stay there. Now it's the dwarf's turn. So with all that stuff that he's got, he's just going to go ahead and attack. Because it's what he does. And he's using the broadsword. I'll use my broadsword. Broadsword. You know, depending on which commercial you watch. UK or USA. So the, uh, the white dwarf attacks the zombie. Three skulls. Well, that was an excellent roll. 
And even if he gets two, he's not going to be able to fend it off completely. So we're going to say he kills the zombie and gets himself 20 cool bounty points worth cash cashable as gold. In the present of, presence of the emperor or one of his retainers, one of his representatives. All right. Now, does he move? If he moves into the corridor, he's going to be putting himself in more danger because he's only got three three body points. Now, he does have the hidden reserves he can use if needed. Yeah, I think he's going to stay where he's at. All right, monster's turn. All right, we're after 10 o'clock. Overtime. Or sudden death, depending on what you want to call it. All right, Zarg on deck. No escape. Close any one door on the board. The door cannot be, cannot again be opened this round. The door suddenly slams shut. <laughs> but which door do we close? I know. Just to be, just to be annoying, we're going to close this door to stop them from getting the equipment. Now they can just reopen it the next round. But there, just slow them down a little bit. Slow down their progress. All right, um, now it's time to move some monsters. Yeah, there's a square between them. So let's... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Moving the shadows. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All queuing up again, once again. That one there could move forward. Okay, this one is going to move into view. One, two, let's see what it is. It's a vermin! So another rat tries to run forward. Yeah, squeak, squeak, squeak. And I think this time the dwarf, he's uh, not having it. He's going to take his shield and he's just going to like swat it out of the way. Just send it flying. Squeak, squeak, squeak off into the darkness. So that was the vermin. Just a kind of a fun little tile that does nothing. Goes nowhere, does nothing. You know, you think it's a big monster and it's just, uh, just, just a joke. Just a gag. Okay, next, um, the... Uh, Abomination is going to move forward. Wounded though he is. One, two, three. And he's going to attack the dwarf. Just knocking over that stone door. Not really. Let's brighten this up a little bit. Actually, we can... Too bright. Full bright. Some interesting looking shadows. You can see the monsters all queuing up. All right, so the uh, abomination is attacking the dwarf with three, two skulls, and he defends with six. He's already maxed out his defense. Amazing. But that's what happens when you can just throw equipment around. I mean, it could be anything. Or you just might get a pile of daggers. So two skulls, he... Yeah, he got four shields. He blocked it easily. So what else can we do? Monster-wise. So I think this... Uh, just this first mutant is going to move forward. Attack the elf. This other one is going to move... Back into the corridor. Technically, that one's out of view of the Barbarian. But I guess would be anyway, moved or not. Yeah, they're really getting crowded now. Because they've got dynamic poses. Darn dynamic poses. Okay, so mutant attacks with two against the elf. Two skulls. She defends with only three. She's got three health left, three body points left. Okay, she didn't get any, wow, no defense at all. So two, she's down to one. Maybe I should have used that Chinese rocket. Okay. 
Well, that's all the monsters can do for now. And they've done a lot of damage. So heroes. So the, the barbarian can only see one monster. And the monster is at a diagonal from him. Uh, what should he do? He's got holy water. But if he uses it, well, he's going to have, yeah, he, if he uses it, he has an opportunity to move so he can see another monster. So, okay, he's going to go ahead and do that. He's going to throw his holy water on the Chaos Mutant. Like, ah! Uh, just, <laughs> Toasty! So that one's destroyed. That's 10 gold for him from the bounty, from killing the mutant. Just add 10 more to his running tally. And he gets to move because it's at the end of his turn under my rules. 7, 8. Where he can stay in view of a monster and keep his, uh, keep his abilities going. That's true of Courage and Frost Skin. So... And protect the elf, too. One, two. There. Right there. Well, I should remove these skulls from the table because they're not being used for anything right now. All right. After the barbarian comes the alchemist. So he's got the Chinese rocket. You know, he's got a big monster to fight. So there's three, four, five more monsters, which could be anything. Seven. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have the Chinese rocket. What am I saying? The elf has it. So what is he moving for? Okay. Well, he could search and find what, what that potion is. Yeah, I think... Let me just see what else he's got. What else he has. He could paralyze one of the monsters with the paralyzing dart. He could run really fast. He could make him lose a turn. He could just pass through the monsters. He's used most of his combat abilities up already. Oh yeah, the heroic sacrifice. The barbarian has the heroic sacrifice, so he could use that to save an adjacent hero from death by taking the blow intended for the other member. I gotta remember that he's got that. Okay. Let's just say if the alchemist runs forward, I mean he could take a swing at the the abomination. But let's just say he searches for treasure and he's going to try to get a potion. So does he just get the potion that he's standing on or does he get this other one too? I'm just going to say he gets the one. So I did pre-shuffle these. Potion of healing. One red die. Ah, so your classic potion of healing. So I think he's going to pass the potion of healing immediately to the elf. So she's got a potion of healing. And the thing is, I mean, you can use a potion any time. So it doesn't even have to be her turn. So she can just go ahead and use it right away. It's one red die. So could be one, could be six, could be anything in between. So let's see what the elf gets for healing. Three. Well, it's something. I mean, a lot of those healing potions that just instantly do four, but so she gets three plus what she already has, which is one, so four. She's up to four. Would have been nice to get six or five, but uh, yeah, it is what it is still. So she's not so close to death. All right, and remove the potion from the. Here's what the little token look looked like. I just grabbed those from Hero Scribe and kind of remixed them a little bit. Okay, so after the alchemist is the elf's turn, now that she's out of danger, more or less. Six. One, two. Now she could search and find out what that potion is. 
Or she could use her longsword to try to kill the uh, abomination. I think we need all the potions we can get at this point. Because the dwarf, well, he's down to three. He's, yeah. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Let's uh, let's just say a dream girl is going to search for treasure and try to get another potion. Because she's standing on the potion tile. It is a potion tile, right? Yep, it sure is. Okay, let's see what it is. Potion of battle. You may... If you have a really weak roll of combat dice and attack, you may drink this blood red potion. It allows you to re-roll your attack dice once. Okay, so you can re-roll your attack dice. That's pretty cool. Something. Maybe she should give it to the dwarf. Because he's, he's closer to battle. Yeah, she's going to pass it to the dwarf. So I'm doing a lot of passing here. So the dwarf is going to have potion of battle... Reroll once. Attack dice. And the way I interpreted this is, yeah, it says cost 200 gold coins, but I mean, you're drawing it from a deck. So I thought, well, if you have one of these in between quests, you could say, I'm going to buy some extra copies and just pay 200 gold each. Okay. So, all right. So that was the elf's turn. So let me remove that tile so I don't forget about it and get extra stuff. Now it's time for the dwarf. So the dwarf is going to attack. No, wait a minute. Is there anything else, the elf? Yeah, OK. So it's the dwarf's turn. He's going to pass one of those crossbows to the elf. So now the elf has a crossbow. So she finally has a long range attack. For all the good, it's going to do her right now. Yes, I know if, if we allowed the d close diagonal squares to be attacked, she could just shoot the abomination right now. But I, I feel like that's cheating. I feel like it makes the longsword silly and superfluous if you allow that. Okay, so instead the dwarf is just going to attack with his standard broadsword against the abomination. Two skulls. Abomination rolls three in defense. Um, two skulls, one block, and then one hit. So this is the wounded one, so he's killed. Good thing I remembered that. Okay, so that was 30 gold bounty collected by the dwarf but for killing the abomination. So 30. You know, uh, that, that pose just kind of reminds me of something. Just like opposite hands. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay, so after the dwarf's attack, he could move. I guess it's not really necessary. We still got more monsters to go. Okay. All right, Zargon. Now, I did not put any provision in the rules saying that if I run out of Zargon cards, like, the bad guys just win. I mean, that's how Space Crusade works. Um, but if I run out, I'm just supposed to shuffle the deck and start over at the beginning. So let's see. Explosive enemy. Play this card immediately after a monster has been killed. The monster explodes in a cloud of jagged bones and teeth. Okay, so that was uh, this monster. So every, let's see, the monster explodes over all adjacent squares. Okay, so that'd just be the dwarf square. Every figure hit is attacked with one combat die for each of the monster's body points. Okay, so he normally has two, so it'd be two combat dice. But they defend normally. Okay, that's a cool card. So boom, he exploded. And I mean, it says after a monster has been, immediately after a monster has been killed. So let's just, we'll just say that that works. So, whoa, boom. They blow you up, boom. That one's for you, Strange Bus. Everybody go sub subscribe and follow him on YouTube and Twitch. Cool guy, cool streams. Okay. 
So uh, the dwarf is going to have to roll, let's see, two dice. It's like he's being attacked by the explosion. Oh, it didn't didn't hurt him at all. So all that debris just flew past him. All right, just it was just CGI blood. It didn't didn't do any damage. Just just kind of freaked him out for a second, but he just held his shield up and he was okay. No damage. All right. So now the monsters get to go. So naturally you would think, okay, move the. Well, yeah, this door can be opened again. Well, someone's got to be adjacent to it. Hmm. Instead of moving the goblin, I think we're going to move the shadows and see what they are first. One, two, three, four. Reveal it. It's an orc. So classic orc attack. Remake orc, actually. So that orc is going to attack the dwarf. Uh, one skull. And he defends with six. It's a major defense. I mean, he's really lucked out on the equipment. Whereas the alchemist has gone for the potions and other um, alchemist items. So one skull, yeah, he easily defended. It's pretty hard to miss when you're rolling with six. Okay, so let's just move the other monsters potential monsters. Let's move the uh, shadows. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five. Yeah, something like that. Okay, um, now we've got that goblin can't do anything. So the mutant is going to attack the barbarian. It'd be interesting to try to play Hero Quest with the Space Crusade rules, or vice versa. Of course, that would be really confusing. But in some instances, it might be interesting to play that way. Just like a hybrid rule set, like hybridize both the games, which in a way we're kind of already doing. We're taking some rules from one game and implementing them in the other. Like in this game, I'm using the, the shadow tiles, which are like the blip tokens in Space Crusade. And in Space Crusade, I'm allowing people to search furniture rooms for not for treasure, but for equipment. So it's like taking something from Hero Quest. Okay, so we've got two attack dice against the Barbarian for the Mutant. One Skull. And how much does he defend with? Let's see. I'm forgetting. Okay, he's got a helmet, so three, four, five. Yeah, five because of the frost skin. So he's got to beat one Skull. Uh, yeah, you can see that he got two, so he blocked it. Okay, so the zombie, the zombie, the uh, the mutant could run away, causing his um, powers to run out. Right? I mean, it would be pretty, uh, it'd be a pretty Richard move, wouldn't it? Sorry, Richard. Um, it would be a pretty uh, dastardly move. But you know what? We're going to do it. So, because he doesn't have his turn to move out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's completely out of the way. Attacked and then ran away. So now, Monster's turn is over. It'd be the hero's turn now at the end of his turn, but his turn is just beginning. So the beginning of his turn, he doesn't see any monsters. So this thing, which has lasted so long, he got a lot of use out of it. His berserker state wears off. He's like, oh, <laughs> he just kind of comes to his own. His adrenaline rush wears off and his potion of frost skin, which also served him very well, is now used up. Because you can no longer see any monsters. No longer line of sight to any monsters. Alright, so it's the Barbarian's turn. But now he can go wherever he wants. He doesn't have to worry about staying put. You know what I mean? Staying put. But there's really only one monster he can. he's going to chase down for getting rid of his bonus. For harshing his buzz. For killing his gains. He's going to go for the Mutant. Six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to attack it now with only four. Still. Against a mutant, that's that's a hard hit. It's gonna be a hard hit. Wow, well, it's full bright him. There, now you can actually see what's what's happening. All right, four attack dice, one skull. It defends with two, and no defense, so he kills it. Just like a big bug lizard man creature. So 10 gold, 10 gold bounty. He's got a lot, okay. Now, Alchemist. Is he going to go full metal? I don't know. Two. Well, he's not going very far with that. One. Two, I guess. Okay, the elf. Ah, the elf can still attack the orc diagonally with the longsword. So instead of using her Chinese rocket or gossamer net, she's going to use the longsword. Three dice against the orc. One skull. Orc defends with two. No defense. The orc is killed. All right, so that's 20 gold for the orc. Sometimes the sound effects just come automatically. So 20 gold for the elf. Now she could move. Well, no, she can't. Not really. All right, it's time for the dwarf. He does have a crossbow, and he can shoot that goblin really easily. It's the only target of opportunity. Or he could go into the room, leaving the elf to fend for herself. Huh. She's got four. But we don't know what those other monsters. They could be chaos warriors, for all we know. So let's just go ahead and shoot the goblin. Sometimes in life, you just got to shoot the goblin. You know what I'm saying? Three, three, uh, okay, one skull. Three attack dice, one skull. That was a shield, but yeah, one skull. And the elf, ha I mean the, the elf. The goblin has a chance. If he rolls a black shield, he's going to block that. Look at that. He blocked it. Ka-ching! She, actually. I guess it's the, it's the she goblin. Gobliness. Goblinette. I don't know what the proper term is. Um, female goblin. Okay, so, all right. I guess it's the bad guy's turn now. Zargon card first. No more heroes. All heroes must roll a combat die. Any who roll a skull miss their next turn. The powers of chaos suddenly surge to overwhelming strength. Okay, so if anybody that rolls a skull misses their next turn. All right, well, we'll just do them in order. All right, so this is for the Barbarian. He doesn't miss his turn. Okay, this is for the Alchemist. He misses his turn. Yeah. Uh, I'll just remember it. Okay, Alchemist misses his turn. Doing. And uh, next we've got the Elf. Does not miss turn. Does not pass go or collect two hundred dollars. Um, actually does. Dwarf. This is for the dwarf. Doesn't miss his turn. So the the alchemist is the only one that misses his turn. Okay. All right. Monster's turn. Okay. Actually, ah, I know what I can do. I can use the uh, the seal of Zargon. Put that tile underneath him. Not to show that he's under command. Oh, that would be a cool way to do it. Hey, I finally found a use for this tile, everybody. So this tile, if uh, the dread spell command or chaos spell command gets cast on a hero, you put this underneath him to show that he's being controlled. I mean, you'd only see the purple edges. 
And I guess if a monster is being controlled by the good guys, you could put Mentor Seal underneath. Yeah. Okay, so he loses his turn. Yeah, where was he? Right here? Yeah. Or, no, he was right here. Okay, sorry. Can't control him. Okay, so he misses his turn. All right. So uh, the monsters get to go. So instead of moving the goblin, once again, I think we're just going to move this uh, shadow forward, see what it is. It's a table. The table! And it disappears. Yeah, botchamania. Okay. Painful, but entertaining. One, two, three. Let's see what the shadow is. Oh, it's a Chaos Warrior. See, I was joking about Chaos Warriors, and turns out there was one waiting in the wings this whole time. Dramatic irony. All right, so Chaos Warrior. Might as well attack. Chaos Warrior attacks the dwarf. If, see, if you like, if you enjoy rolling dice, you you love this channel, right? Because we roll a lot of dice here. All right, uh, two skulls. Of course, you also like uh, Always Bored, Never Boring on YouTube because he starts all his videos that way by rolling dice. Okay, so two skulls, and the dwarf is going to roll six in response to try to defend. So he's got to beat two skulls. Let's see if he can do it. Uh, one of those was cockeyed, and he didn't get anything. Oh, man. They were all skulls. Ah, oh, nothing. So two skulls. So he takes two damage. So he's down to one. He's going to have to use his hidden reserves sooner rather than later. Let's see. Now he's got the he's got the um, potion of battle if he gets a bad attack roll. Okay, let's move these other shadows. One, two, one, two, and we're getting really near the end. We're so close. I can feel it. There's four monsters left. Come on, we can do this. We're in sudden death overtime, everybody. Okay, thanks for thanks for watching us here on HeroQuest fans. Thanks for joining us. All right, so um, it's the hero's turn. So first things first, the barbarian, I mean, he can't even get anywhere near the battle. But he might as well get out of that room because he's just by himself. Twiddling his thumbs. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did have a house rule at one time where it was like if you rolled doubles like four times in a quest, you get to draw another combat card. But I didn't implement it this time. I mean, you know, just, just something to kind of keep it interesting. I like to give the heroes lots of bonuses as Zargon because I feel like I'm throwing so much deadly stuff at them anyway. It's like I, make, I, w I don't want them to be able to think that it was ever unfair. It's like I gave you every chance in the world and you still died. All right. I guess it was that hard. I mean, because some of those uh, quest packs, like I mentioned, the Barbarian quest pack, I'm not going to get into another rant about that. Stay positive. Hopefully they look at the er errata and uh, improve it before release. Or, if nothing else, after release. Fix the problems. Okay. So after the Barbarian comes the Alchemist. Alchemist can't really do a turn because of that. But, I mean, we're going to take it away because next round he gets to do stuff. So he can't take a turn that turn. Loses a turn. Elf. Now the elf can attack. Or she could use a perfect opportunity to use the Chinese rocket. Because the uh, Chaos Warrior is right there. He's going to light one up and blast it in his face. Okay, so we'll say that that gets used up. And it, I get to attack him with five combat dice instead of just three. It's five. Because he defends with four, which is quite a lot. So attack him with five combat dice. Boom. Giant bomb. Two skulls. Yeah. The way I read it, it's like uh, the, this giant bomb <laughs> attacks any monster you can see with five combat dice. So two, two, uh, two skulls. He defends with four. Now he has three body points, to be fair. So he, he'll still be alive, even if they bolt hit him. 
Uh, but no defense, so he is down to one. So that's two skull tiles. We'll just put it next to him to indicate that he's almost destroyed. He's flashing red if this is a video game. Although I think his armor was painted red in some of those early photos, you know, advertisements for HeroQuest. I don't know if that's a Warhammer fantasy thing. Probably. I always think of Chaos Warriors as having gray or black armor, but could be red, could be bright red. Bloody red. Um, okay. After the elf comes the dwarf, so the dwarf could land the killing blow if he's if he's good. Yeah, he's gonna use the broadsword. Now he has the potion of battle, so I guess if it doesn't turn out very well, he can try that. Ha! Totally missed. Okay, he's using the potion. Drinking the potion. Just, just do it. Get a, a do over. Or did it? Get a mulligan. I like mulligans. Who doesn't? All right, so he's going to re-roll those three dice. See what happens. Ah, much better, much better. So you have to accept the second outcome. So two skulls against the Chaos Warrior, who defends with four. Two skulls. Ha! He blocked one, and he was hit by the other one, so he is destroyed because he had three. And that was his third hit. So that's... 100 gold bounty collected by the dwarf. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now, is the dwarf going to move or not? No, because we've got that nice angle with the uh, with the elf. Okay, bad guy's turn. Possibly the last bad guy turn. Isn't that great to hear? Okay, this has just been a just a, a siege. Sargon card, lost loot. Randomly pick a hero. That hero loses 50 gold. Oh man, so I guess they're going to lose a bounty. Subtract that gold from the hero's total. Suddenly you spot a hole in your pocket. Now technically, the only one who actually had gold coins was the barbarian, so he had 55. He should lose 50. That makes it easy, but... You know what, just to be fun, it wasn't random. Let's uh, let's go back to our four-sided D&D &D pyramid die. We'll roll it, and we'll just do the same order as before. Barbarian 1, Alchemist 2, Elf 3, Dwarf 4. 2. So the alchemist should you lose 50 gold. So he has to lose a bounty, really. He can't really lose half a bounty. Because he's got three bounties. 50 gold. So I guess one of his bounties is just going to be worth less. than, than uh, So the 100 is only going to be worth 50. That doesn't even make any sense. But I understand the point of the card. You know what? Zargon gets to make the call, even though he's not in the game, sort of. Let's just go back to the original plan and say that the Barbarian loses 50 gold. So instead of 55, he had 50. That's really what I should have done from the beginning. But, you know, you make a call. Make the call. Because I'm G GMing myself. <laughs> but I'm trying not to be, you know, like I'm cheating. I'm trying to make it interesting. Okay. So after that, we're almost through the Zargon deck completely. So this would have been like a really long quest. It, it was. So now we're going to move our monsters. So again, the goblin is probably going to be the last one out. So let's uh, move the shadow one, two, three, reveal it. It's an orc. So nothing too too exciting there. He's got a she orc here. Wow. Close for comfort. Okay, so she attacks the white dwarf. One skull, and he defends with six.
Notice how the barbarian's hanging back, like after all the time he spent in the spotlight. Ah, uh, yeah, he defended two two white shields. Cha Ching. These other monsters can't really do anything, so it's back to the heroes. Except now they're in the wrong order. The barbarian can't really run into battle, so we're gonna skip him. The alchemist. Can the alchemist do anything? Huh. He could use um, one of his alchemist skills on somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> this is funny. I'm already preparing for the end. So he's going to use the, the Warhog Bladder. Now maybe he should use it on the Dwarf because the Dwarf has that plate armor. But I want to get a hit start on things, so... Yeah, just, just for fun. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Because I do need to use it on the dwarf to get him out of there. So we're not going to use that yet. But yeah, the idea behind it is you attach a giant balloon to your back. And it like a cartoon, it makes you... <laughs> as the air escapes, you go flying. Flying forward as you're running. It's kind of the opposite of what those runners do where they have the parachute that slows you down to make you uh, make you stronger. Okay, so last throat lozenge of the night. Went through a pile of them today. Of course, I was outside running around, screaming. Not really, but a little bit. Okay, so after the alchemist is the elf. So the elf, once again, is going to use the long sword against the orc. It's a really handy weapon. I really like it. I always liked the long sword. Even as a kid, it was like, you got the long sword. Yes. One skull. Orc defends with two. No defense. Orc is killed. So that's 20 gold for the elf. Yeah, so losing 50 gold, I mean, it, it's it's a bummer, but, you know, it's not the end, especially considering how much we're getting. And, I mean, the reward is 500 gold to be divided among the four heroes. In this case, that's what I said at the beginning. So, hey, this is why they're hanging on so long. And in that room is some equipment, so they could get even more stuff. <sighs> okay. So after the elf, now she could move, but why bother when... Oh, the dwarf, he doesn't even have to move. He can just fire his crossbow at the goblin. Probably take it out, unless he gets a really bad roll. One skull. Okay, so the goblin has a chance to defend. Failed to defend. So, right between the eyes. There's uh, five more gold bounty collected by the dwarf. And then the, the final shadow is revealed. Is it going to be a bloodthirster? Is it going to be a giant with uh, dual-wielding um, fire lances? Is it going to be a dragon? What is it going to be, folks? Anybody have any guesses? What's it going to be? Dun, dun, dun. I should, like, zoom in on it for dramatic effect. It's like all of a sudden it's like, you know, we'll be right back. And it's like, come on. Okay, what's it going to be? Ready, set, go. Oh, it's just a mutant. Okay, well, you know, a mutant, it's still, still a threat. Still a monster. It has no fear. It has no pity. There it is. Ugly. Okay, so, but that's the end of the turn, so now it's the bad guys. Let's see what they can pull out of their bag of tricks. Undead hero, or I guess chaos creature. Um, if you're, oh, perfectly. So, I mean, instead of skeletons, we're treating them mutants. So, this chaotic abomination before you was once a hero. 
So I guess in the land of these insectoid creatures, you know, it's like a bug's life or ants, you know, he was, uh, he was a good guy, but those chaos alchemists found him and tortured him and injected him with drugs and brainwashed him and broke him down. And he was eventually corrupted into this evil thing that you see here. Or maybe, uh, you know, maybe they, they uh, guided him away from the path of good and turned him into the twisted creature you see before you. Either way, it's a tragedy, a story for another time. So, yeah, that was my, my story. I'm sticking to it. So now this, he defends with white shields instead of black shields. Now to simulate that, this is a perfect opportunity for me to use my German monster dice, which I always like to bring out. These, because they have double the black shields. So I can still use black shields, and it's as if he were rolling white. I know, the symbolism is that he was once a hero. But I'm just going to use the blue dice, because it's, it's cool. It's a, it's a nice excuse to use them. Okay, so he's got blue dice for defense when he gets attacked. He's probably not going to last much longer. So what else can I do? Um, one, two. And he's going to attack the dwarf, the only target he can attack, and he only gets to attack with two because that's what he attacks with. And he missed. Oh, man. Okay, well, uh, we're going to skip. Let's see. Actually, the barbarian is just going to start running back. nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine it's just like really you're all leaving like you, you know that the battle's over alchemist i mean he's got oh yeah he was gonna six one he's just gonna keep the keep the dwarf in sight and the elf i mean the elf could just attack yeah, the elf's going to try to... It's like, I'm going to get him before you get him. Going to attack the, uh, the the mutant. One skull. Now the mutant gets to defend with his special dice. He's going to beat one, one skull. See if it does him any good. Ah, he blocked it. ka -ching. All right. So she's going she's gonna to run away. Run back to the beginning. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the dwarf. He's going to go ahead and attack. And he's going to attack with the um, broadsword. Two skulls. Okay. The mutant's got to beat two skulls. Blocked one, and it was hit by the other. Now, here's the part where, uh, you know, it's like... Okay, so that's ten, uh, ten gold bounty collected by the dwarf. That's the end. That's the last one, the last monster has bit the dust. Unless there's something in these this deadly pile of cards that's going to bring another monster back before they get out of there. So, oh, and I forgot to use the Warhog Bladder on the... Well, anyway, yeah. So he's going to roll his one die because he's got uh, the plate armor on. I mean, I guess he could take it off, but it's so good. Oh, he got a six. The best he possibly get. One. Oh, wait. I forgot. There's something in there. Hmm, that equipment. But he can't search. Yeah, he needs to get out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why waste that great roll? Okay. Bad guys. Could be a monster. Could restart the clock. Creeping darkness. Strange darkness prevents you from using alchemy. Okay, so forget that plot. That plot line. 
So alchemist items and alchemist skills are out, just like magic would have been blocked if we were playing the magic campaign. Okay, so it's the uh, barbarian's turn. Let's see what he rolls, first of all. Five. Yeah, he's going to keep advancing towards the stairs. One, two, three, four, five... All right, now we've got the alchemist. Since he can't use his powers, his skills this time, maybe he's just going to see if he can get that equipment. Five. Now this would be the perfect time to put a trap on there, but that's not how I decided traps work in this campaign. So in this mission, this quest, get it. One, two, three, four, five, right into the door. Open the door. Any he goes there and he's going to search for treasure and see what he gets with an equipment draw. Toolkit! Hey, a toolkit to disarm traps. Now, I never had to worry about disarming traps around well, this time, really. Not really. So, yeah, toolkit. So we'll just add that to his list. Of skill, well... It's going to be under potions and other items, so toolkit. All right, moving right along. We got to get going. Elf seven. One, why are they going that way? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dwarf. Uh, he only gets to roll one. See, the alchemist is going to catch up with him and then use the warhog bladder on him. That's what I think is going to happen. Two. Wow. One, two. See, that's more what I expect. You know, you just get really bad rolls. You, there's no way to change that. I mean, because your dice are fair. They're not uh, not cheating dice. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say. All right. Bad guy's turn. All right. Let's see if there's anything that can thwart the good guys. Kind of anticlimactic, but this keeps it going. Oh, monster shield. Yeah, this would have been nice earlier. You know, the bad guy throws one of his minions in the way to take the hit, but there aren't any, so just wasted. Barbarian. Five. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. I forgot about that pit. I almost went right into it. Remember that? Yeah, there's a there's a pit tile there. So he's gonna he would land right in it because you need a, at least enough to get to the other side. So we're just gonna hold off for a second. Not that he would be killed by it, but what a what a pain. <laughs> just nickel and dime, chip away at their health as they try to try to make their escape. So after the barbarian is the alchemist. So now there's no restriction on what he can use. So he can go ahead with that. Let's see if he gets enough to actually catch up with him. Eight, because I want that reward. Let's take that equipment off of there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he's going to use the Warhog Bladder on his friend the Dwarf. So it says roll twice as many red dice as normal. So that means he would roll two instead of one just this one time. So that arrow skill is used up. Oh yeah, this is for the... Um... Yeah, after the alchemist comes the elf. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, she'd fall in too. Let's just put her next door. Seven, eight. Over there. All right. 
After the elf comes the dwarf. Now he gets to roll two dice. What a luxury. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he still, he got snake eyes. He got two. So, hey, but, you know, that's the intro to always bored, never boring. He always rolls snake eyes. It's like, oh, man, why did I get that? It's the worst roll you could get. One, two. From now on, he just has one. Okay. Monster turn. Let's see if this card is anything. There's only so many possibilities. I don't memorized it yet. Um, yeah, the monster attacking. There's no monsters to attack. Okay. Let's get back to the good guys. All right. Let's see what he gets. Well, he's, okay, so the barbarian is going to try to jump the trap. So he's jumping the trap. He got eight, so plenty. Now he has to roll one die and get anything but a skull. If he rolls a skull, he falls in. <sighs> he fell in. Okay, so he loses one body point. So Griff is down to five. I mean, he's hardly taken any damage. So he's in the pit. Now, is anybody else close to death? Well... Yeah, the dwarf is the only one, but he's got his hidden reserves. So if he has to use it, he, he will. Because the combat card is only good for that one quest anyway. The next quest you get some more, but they're random. So that's going to be something different. You can't, you, you don't use it, you lose it. Okay, so after the bar, but you know, all four heroes could be in the same pit if they all fall in. Alchemist. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right into the room. Is there anything he could use that'd be useful? Not really. Not at this point. Okay, elf. Okay, the elf is assuming she doesn't get two, she's gonna try to jump the trap. Six. Okay. Anything but a skull, fifty percent chance. Aha! Now, if she had the rabbit boots, that would be a, a failure right there. But never so happy to see that. Okay, so she makes it over. So got six. Jump in the trap. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now the dwarf with his one movement die. Six. Hey. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Sometimes you get good rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not trick dice. Okay, bad guys. Zargon deck. Chaos champion. Well, yeah. That would have been cool if there were some monsters. See, some of these, it's like, yeah, I mean, they were just at the bottom of the deck. Well, the monsters are all gone. Okay, barbarian. Now, see, now he can just crawl right out of the pit. He's fine. Ten. Under normal circumstances, he could search that pit for treasure. Of course, it could be another pit, and he falls in again. <laughs> okay. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's going to be the first one out. I mean, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets the reward to share. Alchemist. Five. It's going to beat the dwarf. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. Elf. Four. One, two, three, four. Right behind the barbarian. And now the dwarf gets to roll his one. His plate armor clinging to his back. He only moves two. And he can only move one because the alchemist is in the doorway blocking his path. Okay, bad guys. Zargon card. Uh, Ray's dead. Well, yeah. If there was a monster killed in the last round, I get to bring him back. But there wasn't, so it's just nothing. And there's only one card left. And then we get to shuffle the deck. And it could be anything. Um, 
Yeah, because the wandering monster in this quest is a goblin. So it's not really that big a deal if you get one. Okay, Barbarian. This might be his last one unless he gets a bad roll. Ah, boxcars. You got 12. I was really excited about that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's out of the quest. Barbarian has completed a quest. Okay. All right. Alchemist. Seven. One, two, three, four. Now he can try to jump the trap. One, two, three. He's got to get anything but a skull to avoid falling in the pit. He fell in the pit. <laughs> okay, well, at least it's over. So he lost one, so he's down to three. He's in the pit. And that ends his turn. Now the elf is probably, well, she might make it to the stairs. Eleven, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Dream Girl made it. So the elf is out of the quest. I'll have to count up everybody's uh, winnings here. Well, we'll do that at the very end. So there's still something to look forward to. Okay, so the, uh, now the alchemist can climb out of that hole. Four. One, two, three, four. Race ya. Okay, now the dwarf like gets one die. He rolled a five. Okay, is he going to make it right up to the trap? One, two, three, four. Ah, not enough to jump it. So he's going to stop short just, right, just at the doorway. Bad guy. Okay, so this is the last card, the last Zargon card, and then I'm reshuffling the deck. Chaotic Defense. See, that's a great one. I love that Chaotic Defense. This is really, I designed this one for bosses, but there aren't any bosses to use it. Okay, so that was wasted. Is there gonna, There's probably not going to be another bad guy turn, but I'll just give these a quick shuffle. At least if I forget next time, I'll have it like kind of pre-shuffled. It's always good to shuffle it a number of times. Okay, Barbarian's out. Now it's time for the Alchemist. 11. Exodius Majesticus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. At least into the final room. Alf is out, so the dwarf is going to try to jump the trap unless he gets a 1. Six. Okay. As long as he doesn't roll a skull, he's going to jump that pit. Ha ha! Tally ho. Okay, so he made it. Jump in the trap. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, I guess I was wrong. I guess there is uh, a chance now. Let's get that uh, Let's get that Chaos Warrior on the board. Okay, we're going to draw a Zargon card. Jokes aside. Distraction. You suddenly lose focus and miss your swing. Well, you're not attacking anything, so it doesn't really matter. So let's set that aside. <laughs> not putting the cards away yet, just, just in case. Okay. So Alchemist moves first. He's going to be leaving the quest. Six. One, two, three. And he's out of there. Ta -ding! And the dwarf. Poor guy, left by himself. He needs Boren's armor is what he needs, but he's going to have to find it the old-fashioned way because I didn't put any artifacts in there. Five. He's going to have to play a regular quest. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Zargon deck gets another run. Ah, the undead hero again. It's a chaotic whatever. So, but doesn't matter because there aren't any of those type of monsters around. There's no monsters, period. Dwarf again. Two. Oh, man. See, at this point, it's like, just end the quest. Come on. But no, the, the show must go on. We're almost done, folks. 
Alarm! You may open any one closed door on the board and reveal its contents. Well, all the doors are already open, so no point to that one. All right, come on, Lottie. You can do it. One! What is this? Keeping the... It's like you think I was getting paid by the hour. Okay. Two. Well, I should have drawn a... Yeah, I should have drawn one of these. Ambush. Oh, man. Play this card if a hero moves around a corner or through a doorway. Well, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. So I'm not going to put another monster out, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it would, be a, it would be a goblin. I mean, it wouldn't do that much damage. But, yeah. Technically, it did not fulfill the requirements of that card. So we're not going to do it. Even though it's just a goblin. It wouldn't be worth any gold anyway. And, yes, I'm going to honor the two that he rolled there. One, two. <laughs> this never ends. All right, Zargon card. Creeping Darkness, doesn't matter. Dwarf. Three. Well, it three is enough. I'll take it. One, two, three. Dun, da, da, dun. The dwarf is out of there. Ha. Huh. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody, for watching. So we're going to just wrap this up. And I got a big mess to clean up. Just, just piles of cards and tiles. You can't see the mess that I've got here in front of me. But uh, yeah, it's just just a lot of stuff. Um, it was a fun. It was a fun time. So let's see what everybody got. So the Griff the Barbarian got out of there. He still had his uh, heroic sacrifice. He never needed to use. Um, he ended up with 60s, 80. Okay, so he got 235, 235 gold from his bounties. Now they all get 500 to be divided amongst them, but that's what he had, and he no potions to speak of. Okay, um, and then, so that was Griff. So Exodius Majesticus, the alchemist, he got, well, he still had his uh, paralyzing dart alchemist item, and he had his toolkit. Um, he's tricked out with a staff and a dagger. He never used the dagger. But how much uh, bounty did he get? He got 125. Not too shabby for, for him. So that was his total, 125. Uh, Dream Girl the Elf. She got out of there with uh, a crossbow to add to her longsword and helmet. Um, she still has her Mithril potion. Uh, she... Yeah, I crossed that off. She's got a Gossamer Net Alchemist item. And she had how much gold? How much bounty to cash in? One oh five. hundred and five was her tally. And then last but not least, I heard that Lottie. Uh White the Dwarf. <laughs> can't do can't do the accent this late at night. Sorry everybody. Let's see. He got he had a lot. So I thought the Barbarian had a lot, but let's see. 100, 250, three. He had 380, wow. 380, so he was, he had the most. He, he was the winner. Okay, so let's add everything up. At the end here, some of you have already done it, but I'm tired, so give me a moment here with my scratch paper. That's how we did it in the old days. Okay, 845 gold. Total bounty, 845 gold for the four heroes. None of them died. And I think this was a decent challenge. I mean, at the end of it, let's see. The alchemist was down to three. He used up all his healing. 
Um, the barbarian was down to five. The elf used all her healing. She was down to four. And I mean, we even had that healing potion that we had to find. Um, and then the dwarf was down to one. Now he did have his hidden reserves. He could have restored two. That's what I should have done as I was wandering around. But, you know, it's kind of like in the North American version. You can just wait until you die to come back with it. it just brings you back from the de from the from the brink. So 845 gold. And if we add 500 as a reward for completing all the quest and killing all the monsters, all of them. 1,345 gold, which in the Japanese version wouldn't be too shabby. But in the, all the other versions, that's great. That's amazing. 1345 was the tally. So April 9th. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And let's just see uh, who else was in the chat who's still uh, still awake, still alive here on HeroQuest fans. So a couple more people joined. Uh, sorry I didn't welcome you right away. But it's the Fritz. Welcome. Uh, Impressonia. Impressonia. Uh, let's see. And then we love Marvel striker, striker six, six, seven, of course, Lori pub cac sips zero six. Always a pleasure. Zero a X two. Sounds like a droid. If you're not a droid, I apologize, but it's just the first thing I thought of. What, what have I got now? I'd say let's, let's raid somebody, but who's, who's still awake at this hour? Nobody. I need to, I need to follow more channels because I, I always want to raid somebody. Does anybody have any suggestions? Anybody who's focused on like fantasy gaming or classic video games, uh, anything like that? Anybody you know? I don't think Gareth Hridemar is streaming right now. Otherwise, he'd be showing up in my list. I'm just looking to see. Yeah, raiding is fun. I mean, you're just trying to help other people out and build their channel. Okay, well, I don't see anybody to raid, so uh, let me just see if I got a message from somebody. No, that was just an advertisement. There's so much advertising. All right. Well, um, everybody have a great night. Have a great rest of your weekend. Um, if I don't hear from you, happy Easter. Happy Passover, whatever you call it. Um, but it, uh, have a good one. Have a great night. See you next time on HeroQuest Fans. All right, this ends the stream. Catch you next time. Now I got to clean all this up. <laughs> all right, good game. Bye.